I'm calling from Los Angeles, and I'm having a little problem under the name That Umbrella Guy. I sent him my phone number at least 20 times in the chat and told him to call me and told him to call me. Mm -hmm. um, he ignored me. Or I'm a man. I filed the report. If you guys could take a look at it and give me a call back, I would love to, to hear what you guys can do to help us. We really, huh, yeah. we, we really need to kind of stop this guy at least until Monday. I told him to call me. Or I'm a man. Going up, I'm feeling fly, yeah, I'm so damn fresh. Got that platinum grill, bringing in the chest. Diamonds in my mouth, shining when I speak. That umbrella guy, Ross is speaking geek. Ice on my teeth, I'm dripping so hard. Platinum grills, I'm the king of the boulevard. Throwing money in the club, making haters mad. I'm the baddest in the game, no one gets a pass. Ooh, yeah. Crushing all these lines, yeah, I feel fly. Rolling on the dubs, that umbrella guy. Iced out pro on the boulevard. You ain't a comic gangster, don't be playing hard. Ice on my teeth, I'm flying so high. Dropping the bass. That umbrella guy, one girl to rule them all, one girl to bind them Baby, I'm so iced out, run to blind them Rolling in town, I'm an army of one Doing verbal walk by, blazing like the sun Riding in my whip, crushing false accusers Dropping off the base on the real abusers yeah. Living life fast, no time for the smoke Justice on my mind, stacking up on my throat Life in the fast lane, no time to blink Ice on my teeth, watch it when I speak Chilling on my rhymes, never missing a beat Ice on my teeth, yeah I'm living that sweet That umbrella guy, bringing the platinum heat Crushing every hate and no time for defeat, oh yeah all right, coming to you live from the hat rack. It's that umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get through it. Coming to you live from the hat I rack. Even, I couldn't even do it. All the way. <laughs> Hashtag hammer in the hat rack. That's what I. That's what I need to start calling my uh, my freaking live streams. You know, <laughs> hat rack. <laughs> oh. Based on um, what I played on my show earlier, I think we should start calling your streams Hammer Time. <laughs> oh, man. I love that freaking song, by the way. That was an epic rant. Oh, it's so good. So good. And <laughs> that poor little with guy. with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had people coming out of the woodwork being like, I always wondered why he said that. And now I know. So we were uh, digging into some tug lore, and, and that was epic fun oh man yeah we had that that was a live stream from i can't remember if that was 2022 20, yeah mm -hmm. there it was that was a we had a had old specter gaming come on who uh he said some pretty awful stuff you know and i was like yeah you know you wouldn't say that to my face because i beat you with a fucking hammer <laughs> <laughs> was like, he was like reaction. did i say that did i post that yeah did, did i, I? I? Show did, I, did I just show me the post? <laughs> Who says that if you didn't do it, you would know if you didn't do something that heinous? I mean, telling somebody that their kids and wives should unalive themselves or whatever. Yeah, you did, you would like... remember that you said it. So did I say that? I don't know. I might have. <laughs> I might. I might have. Maybe I did. Oh, my God. Oh, but you know, it's funny, though. This kind of relates to what we're talking about tonight, actually, because. <sighs> Fighting words, fighting words are a real thing. And yes, indeed. <laughs> right? Fighting words are a real thing. And I think what you, what that conversation was between you and that <laughs> total d moron, uh, those were fighting words. Like he was, he had posted fighting words that, that any like rational person would consider inciting to violence. Like when you say something like that about a man's wife and children, that's, I think most rational people would think, oh, you know, you, you might, you might get, you might get hit in the teeth. That's one way to think about fighting words is if you could reasonably expect to get punched in the mouth, you probably just said fighting words, right? 
And of course, there's a whole legal definition that you would have to list, you know, have a judge decide. But it's pretty close to fighting words or is fighting words when you say something like that, like basically calling somebody out and saying bad things. They hope bad things happen to your children and your wife. Just really awful. But then in this case, what we have here is we <laughs> keep calling her off. You I can't camera. stop myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like how your shirt is hanging by the peg. Yeah, look at look how I'm mad. I'm like, what's that? What the hell? What this the hells? Yeah, look at that. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when they, you know, we're getting these accusations flying at us about, oh, you're defaming and you're doing the. I take that very seriously. I'm a journalist. I take defamation, libel, slander. I know the definitions of all of those things, and I know the differences between them, which these people never understand. Um, I take that very seriously, and I do a whole lot of investigation before I go forward with anything. And uh, I know the difference between a protected opinion and defamation. There's a lot of hurdles you got to jump over before you get to defamation. Yep. And I would never intentionally... Um, say anything or report anything that I knew to be untrue. See, that's that's part of it. You have to know that it is untrue. If you do good faith investigation, right, and you find whatever it is you find and you report that thing that you found, and then it turns out later that that perhaps wasn't all the information, that is not def defamation in any way. That is simply what you knew at the time. That's how investigation goes. And the weird thing about what we're doing here and what we do and what I do every day is that I do my investigations live on the air. Mm -hmm. There've been plenty <laughs> of times, there've been plenty of times where I'm investigating something and I'm like, oh, I think it's this. I think it's it. Nope, not that. Like that's, that's good faith. That's not, that's not like, oh, I'm just throwing out allegations everywhere. Like, no, no, this is, this is how you do it. You follow every rabbit hole until you, you know, and frankly, so the weird emails start coming in after we did the uh, interview with Lynette's stepdaughters. Yes. And, 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 and to note that, you know, to what, what that includes, that has court documentation, that has experts talking about it. You have the person themselves talking about it, and you have other family members talking about it. So, I mean, and, and the person who wrote the report witnessing it yeah, firsthand. Yes, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a. Yes, it wasn't a, and it wasn't an incident report made to them. It was them reporting an incident. You're correct. Yeah. Right. So that makes a big difference to me, too. When you and I spoke about that, because we had that thing for about a week before we ever talked about it. So yep. you and I had multiple conversations about this. Like, how do we what are these what do we think about this piece of evidence? And all of those things play into how credible a piece of evidence is. I've been doing this for a long time, folks, 20 years. I am pretty careful about looking at evidence, sifting through it. Um, and I've never been involved in any kind of scandal where people would say what she reported was 100% untrue. I have reported so many family court cases where I have published documents. I have published my opinion about those documents and about the people in them. I have never heard a peep from anyone that I reported about. Not a peep, not a cease and desist. Well, except for that Shane guy, David Shane. <laughs> well, David Shane's a little. But he's an yeah. he's an exception to yeah. the. He's an exception because he's a moron. Well, he's also a listening believer. So he had accusations against him. He he's the PR guy for Amber Heard. So he had a bunch of accusations against him. Well, he publishes and accusations all the time. He defames people all right. the time. So when he had them, hey. I'm just playing by his rules. Anybody that tells me I should listen and believe, fine. I'll take whatever said there. I'm not a listening believer, but you told me to, so I'm playing by your rules. Oh, and 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 now the article that I wrote that he threatened to sue over was so funny because I was defending him. I actually was writing the article to say, look at these allegations that are un that are not corroborated that are out there about David Shane. And here's what I suggest: I suggest you get more evidence. And they were it was already out there. Like it was out there and I'm saying, hey, maybe take a moment and see if there's more information because this is just a couple of people online saying that this happened and it may not have. And I took the opportunity to sell to sell my book 
believe evidence, the death of due process from Salamina hashtag me too, which is about believing the evidence and not just wild accusations. And this idiot had his lawyer send me a cease and desist to actually threaten me with a lawsuit for telling people not to jump to conclusions about him. <laughs> yeah. And then it he came did. out like a day later, all this evidence that it was oh, yeah. true. <laughs> Guess guess who uh, <laughs> guess who dropped all that evidence? I don't remember. Oh, I did. <laughs> I didn't get a cease and desist because I was like, uh, yeah, I heard all this stuff because you know at, at the beginning there were there were three people and I can't remember which one of us talked about it first. You know that like it all happened pretty quick. You know everybody started noticing this, but I'd gotten my hands on a bunch of the evidence and I was waiting for some other stuff to come in. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to talk about this. And uh, I heard David Chain is very litigious. You know, he at least threatens to say. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you can threaten me, but, you know, I'll just dump everything I have to do. Oh, and it turned out he got fired from a previous job for grabbiness. Yeah. And, you know, we called him David oh. Grabass Shane at some point. <laughs> it was because amazing. So, so he had no recourse. So I'm just saying that, like, of all the people, and I've reported and named many people involved in, in child abuse cases. So very similar to what we were reporting in this uh, Lynette Preston issue, child abuse, child SA, that sort of thing. I've, I've named people in the court documents and I have never been contacted by one person I've named to say, you got it wrong, you're defaming me, nothing, not a word, not a peep, neither has my publisher. So um, I'm quite confident when I go forward with any evidence. And I, but I will also say at the same time, if there is evidence out there that contradicts something I have, oh, I definitely want to see it. I will follow the evidence wherever it goes. I have a good faith interest in finding the truth wherever it is, no matter who it implicates. And if it implicated Jeremy Hales, I will still look at it. If it's legitimate, I would report it. I haven't seen anything like that. So I get this, um, a couple of people sent this to me. A couple of people sent this to me. And uh, this is, I'm not going to be saying this person's name. And there's actually, a, I actually have a connection to some, to people like this. I have never been connected to this person in particular. Um, but you may know her as the jokalist <laughs> because that's what Jeremy calls her. So I, I think we should just keep uh, saying that. I almost feel bad for her though. Jokalist. That's a good I almost name feel bad for her. I, I mean, I feel bad for her. I'm going to mock this, uh, you know, relentlessly, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let me just preface it by saying I'm not a monster. I actually feel bad for this person because this is a, this is not a person with a very high IQ. <laughs> and the reason why, and I don't usually, I don't usually like to make fun of, you know, and, you know, mock people who are just incredibly dumb. But the reason why I say that, I have a long history with- <laughs> I'm not, not going to make fun of her. Well, I've stepped on chewing gum that's smarter than her. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, I, I said agree. I was going to, but I do feel I do <laughs> feel a little bad about it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel a little compassion for the cockroach. I'm like, oh, okay. I got I'm you. feeling a little anxiety, maybe. I have anxiety over the roof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, because here's the thing, and it, here's what, what makes me think, no, it does need to be talked about because, because of the kind of reporting I've done, which is about family court and people who's, who have gotten their kids taken away by CPS. I, I feel that that reporting is very important, but it is also very dangerous if you don't do all your homework, if you don't read every court document you can find, if you don't, um, make sure you're, you're getting all the information. And there are some people who consider themselves to be journalists um, who don't do those things, who don't do, you know, the, in the background checks they should be doing and the, you know, looking for police records that they should be looking for, speaking to people who know them, et cetera, all these things that you really need to do. And, and they, get, they get caught up in these sovereign citizen circles which are very okay so this is this goes back a little, this goes back a ways talk how much time do we have to talk about this oh we can talk oh it, it, this is gonna get funny there's some lore funnier. there's some lore here yeah. okay oh, we have so, plenty of time i want to hear it several years ago several years ago i would say it was probably in 2021 
when I was covering the Cynthia Absug case. Now, Cynthia is someone the media uh, defamed and called QAnon mom. They said that she was plotting to kidnap her son from DCF and that she was a uh, medical child abuser, that she had Munchausen. This, these were the lies that the media told. Now, I happen to have been basically embedded with her from the day they took her son. And at the same time, what I didn't know was that um, a filmmaker was also embedded with her, talking to her, um, that I later, like a year later, got in contact with. And then we got to compare notes. And it was just, we uncovered just the biggest scandal in this story. She was an innocent woman who was framed for what and the government did put her in jail. They found her guilty. And it was the biggest joke of a trial. I was there. I was in the courtroom. She had terrible counsel who didn't preserve anything for the record for her appeal. Um, they, there was no evidence against her. They basically had to fabricate evidence. And we even got the prosecutor on camera afterwards saying he couldn't believe he got the conviction on the uh, attempted kidnapping. Oh, we no. got him on camera saying that. It hasn't been released to the public yet, but it will be. It will be one day. Uh, right now, her appeal is going on, and so the story is not over. But when it is over, when it when it when it ends, uh, it will probably be all over some major network. So stay tuned. But anyway, it was back then that I got in. in I got enmeshed in this world of advocates. They call themselves advocates, and you will notice that the. The jokalist calls herself an advocate journalist. Now, I sometimes consider myself an advocate for certain things, you know, for justice and and for uh, I, I believe I advocate for innocent families. But I think it's kind of a strange thing to put yourself in an advocate position where you are, oh, I don't know, like advertising, basically advertising that you help families who CPS comes to, but you're not a lawyer. And you're really just a lay person. You didn't go to J school. You don't have a journalism degree. You don't, not that I think you need those things. I don't have a journalism degree, although I did go to J school, but I got sick of it and I dropped out because um, it was stupid and I could just work. So, but I mean, what I mean is these people don't have a background like I do. They don't have a background in in reporting. They don't have a background in news. They don't have a background working with editors, working with in a professional setting. You know, I've been working for professionals in the uh, publishing field since I was 21 years old. I'm now 48. I worked for ABC. I worked for where I learned how to, I learned broadcasting and how advertisement works and how I worked for, it was ABC, ESPN, Radio Disney, and WXCD in Chicago on State Street. I worked there for a couple of years. I worked for Premier Radio Networks. I worked for Rush Limbaugh's company. That's who his syndicator was. Like I, I've been around the broadcasting and news industry since I entered the, basically since I entered the workforce. So then when I transitioned into writing, I, I went to work for, um, um, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to forget his name. This happens to me every time, Tug. Did I, my meds wore off. Uh, he's, <laughs> and he's so famous too. I'm so embarrassed because he's so famous. He wrote the book Prodigal Son, just an amazing book. He's an amazing conservative icon. Hold on. David. No, I never look now. David. Prodigal Son book. Book. David Horowitz. Thank you. I got it. And I loved him too back then. I mean, I, 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 David Horowitz was an icon. So anyway, I went to my very first writing job was working for uh, David Horowitz. He had a magazine called Front Page Magazine, and he had started a new online blog called Newsreel Blog. And it was one of the first like on, online conservative uh, blogs or websites. You know, now we have the, I work for PJ Media with town hall and we have the blaze and we have all these things oh, that's mine <laughs> that was <It's> mine. okay <laughs> well we didn't have any of that back then this was like right when the internet was born basically you know in the 90s and so i went to work for him at this newsreel blog and i started writing and i've been writing ever since and from there i went to pj media but that means that i've had extensive uh background with at working with editors working with professional writers with authors um and so there's just a set of standards that you learn, you know, when you're writing, even if it's opinion, right? Because a lot of what I wrote were opinion. 
and um, opinion pieces. And I still, to this day, write opinion pieces and I do journalism too. But sometimes my journalism is infused with my opinion because I don't believe it's possible for a journalist to be unbiased. I don't think that's possible. And I don't think you should hide your bias. Um, I do think it's possible to write a straight news story and I've done it several times, uh, but I prefer it when I make jokes. So I like to put my jokes in my writing. So when I call Judge DeThomas as the worst judge in America currently, that's my protected opinion. And I can call him that while at the same time reporting facts about whatever it is he's doing there. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't diminish what I'm writing. So anyway, I've learned how to vet a story, vet a source. You know, my editors require sometimes that my sources um, you know, we'll give them certain information that won't get published just so that they know who they, that they actually work in the play. Let's say they, they come to you and they say, I'm a whistleblower. I work at Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I want to tell you about, um, uh, gender transition payments that are being made for minors. Okay. We, we can tell that story, but I'm going to need to see your work badge. I'm going to need to probably see a pay stub and then it has to go through my editor, right? That's how you do it. Now we're not going to publish those things, but you know, it just, you verify who's who. So it's just, it's sad to me when I see these, these people who they were all of them, every single one of these people who call themselves advocate journalists, there's a handful of them and I could name them all, but I'm not going to, because I have always said, these are the types of people you don't want to put in the spotlight because it gives them the attention that they want. And then it brings more people to them. And I don't want people going to them because what happened is Cynthia Absug happened to her because of these people. It happened to her because of advocate journalists who call themselves advocate journalists who work in this in this niche of CPS, uh, you know, corruption where they're trying. They think they're doing a good thing. And that's the other thing. They truly believe what they're doing is good. I don't think these are evil people. They're just incredibly dumb and they don't have professional skills or chops and they can't they, they make big well, mistakes they're also including, announcing their they're announcing their bias they're like hey you know right when i go into this i'm a i'm an advocate you know right again right you know, like you, you can become an advocate at some point yeah. like i've advocated for the hernandez family but that was after i looked at all of the evidence like i had to see all of it first you know i wanted to see the, the medical records and the documents, I became an advocate for Maya Kowalski, right? But I, I sat and watched the whole trial and I saw the evidence and I read all the documents. And so, but the, the, the advocacy part of it comes later. That comes after you've done your due diligence, right? Not right off yep. the bat. Yeah, yeah. And, you need to find out about the case first. Hell yeah. But what they're doing is, and I think I... I'm not saying specifically the Jokalist is doing this because I don't know anything about her and what she does, but I do know people around her. I do know of people around her very, very well. I know who they are and I know what they do because I've studied them and they were involved in the Cynthia Absug um, tragedy. And what they did was, what they would do is they, they would advertise to these families. They go on these Facebook pages where people have just lost their children. And many of them have lost their children too. So it becomes very personal to them, which is why it's like this, this drive, you know, to, to do this. It's like their life's purpose. And they advertise on these Facebook pages where, where parents have been traumatized by CPS, that they can help them, that they're advocates and they know how to get their kids back. And they will make these claims, Tug. They will make these outrageous claims. I can help you get your kids back. I have gotten people's kids back. Oh. And then you find out when you do a little digging that ain't nobody ever got anybody's kids back. Like none of these people have gotten anybody's kids back. And when you ask for names and believe me, I have, I have been like deep into this in contact with the people I'm talking about, asking, asking them for evidence that they ever got anyone's children back. And I never got one bit of evidence. And yet they're on Facebook lives all the time telling these vulnerable parents that they got kids back. I will tell you, you can ask anybody who has ever reached out to me for help when CPS takes their kids. The very first thing I tell them is there is nothing I can help you with. I cannot help you get your kids back. 
Do not look to me to help you get your kids back. And in fact, if I tell your story, if it passes the muster of what I need to tell the story, it will most likely backfire on you. I will get paid for it, but you will get retaliated against by the system. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So I tell people all the time, I don't want to tell your story. What I think you should do is go get yourself the biggest, baddest ass lawyer you can find and sell everything you own to pay that badass lawyer to get your kids back because that's the only way you're going to get your kids back. So, but these people, what they do is because they know that the, the most of these people are very poor and they don't have the money to um, hire a lawyer, a badass lawyer. And so the advocate journalists then step into that void and they say, you don't need to pay a lawyer, you know, $10,000, pay me 3000 instead and I will get your kids back. That literally is what they do. Hmm. And I have, ha I have reports of some of these people who have taken like three grand or whatever from, from people, a family, a grieving family, and then disappeared. Never, to, it's, so some of them are evil, but some of them are not. And I don't know which category the joke list falls into. I don't know enough about her. I have been told by people who do know her and who have dug into what she does that she's just really not very smart. Um, and she got taken in by these same sovereign citizen groups that are creeps and and um, and scam artists. But the heart of the story, and it's too much to go into of the Cynthia Absug story, is that she was fooled by a group of these people who are all tied together. They all know each other. So I guarantee you that the Jokalist runs in the same crowd. I know she knows them. I know she does because I've, I've already seen who she knows on Facebook. So I know she knows them. Um, this group of people lied to Cynthia Absug and told her that they were with the Pentagon with a task force, a task force, uh, a child trafficking task force, and that her son was being trafficked to all these, you know, what's, uh, and they had these wild claims. And this poor woman, she was out of her mind already because the court had driven her absolutely crazy. They didn't get, they didn't let her see her son for over 60 days. And then when she did get to see him, he had bruises on him that no one could explain to her. So what do you think is going to happen when I'm the one telling her, no, you can't do, there's nothing we can do except get you a lawyer. We have to get you a lawyer. We have to get you a good lawyer. That's what I'm telling her. And every lawyer she talks to is an idiot and the lawyers aren't, aren't filing the paperwork that she wants them to file. So we keep looking for another lawyer. I'm the one telling her, you got to go through the process. You have to go through the process. These other people come in and they say, oh no, we're with the government. We're working for Donald Trump and we're going to get your kid back. We're already starting. Uh, we, we have a, a, an operation in, in, you know, it's already happening. And they convinced her that that was true. And that's how she got charged with See, attempted that's... kidnapping. That is so messed up. Because she told her daughter, her older daughter, that she didn't have to worry because, you know, these people were going to get him back. We're going to get her son back. Right. But she believed she was talking to law enforcement. Hmm. They even had, I have evidence, they gave her business cards that had the, the Pentagon on it. And one of them, by the way, Tug, I actually called the FBI because it was so, I was so worried because she disappeared. She went mm. off the radar from me and I didn't know where she went. And I, all I knew was that those people had gotten a hold of her probably. And I was so worried about her and it, she was just gone. So I had already, I had this like dossier on all these people that I had been gathering this evidence because I knew who she was talking to. And um, I called the FBI and they came to my house and I sat them at my table and I was like, look. This is a problem. These people are are impersonating police and Pentagon and military. And someone's going to get killed. And I said that. I said, if you don't stop these people, someone is going to get killed. Sure. I never heard back from them. I don't, nothing ever happened to these people. But guess what happened? Somebody got killed. So one of the guys that I gave them the folder on of one of the guys in the dossier um, his name was Christopher. He's the one who got shot. What was his last name? Um, Neely Blanchard was the woman who they did this to. Same thing that they did to Cindy. 
promised that she could get her kids back, told her to do all this weird uh, sovereign citizen shit and, and file all these ridiculous affidavits. That's another thing they do is sell these affidavits that don't work in court, but they tell you, if you file this, if you file this, you're going to get your kids back. They will have to turn them over. You know, this is some of that weird shit where they're like, sign it with your, your bloody thumbprint, you know? <laughs> I've seen some, I've seen some stuff coming out of the, the people that claim sovereign citizenship. It's just absolute insanity, man. I've got an uh, NBC, NBC right. article pulled up, you, pull this up. Cause yeah. Share it. Okay. All right. Because this isn't this is all related. NBC News, QAnon beliefs, promise of child custody help hang over deadly shooting. This happened after I told the FBI this was going to happen, by the way. Witnesses told authorities that the woman accused of killing Christopher Hallett shot him because she said he was conspiring with the government to keep her children from her. <laughs> Neely Petrie Blanchard set out from Pensacola, Florida on a 300 mile road trip to meet a man she told family members could help her regain custody of her three daughters, her family said. Petrie Blanchard had been engaged in custody battles for more than 10 years, with her mother having recently served as guardian of her twin daughters. In that time, her behavior had become increasingly erratic, according to interviews with her mother and her sister, and she had begun to espouse conspiracy theories about child you-know-what and including QAnon. An internet-born conspiracy theory that baselessly claims there's a secret war between President Donald Trump and a cabal of elites who do bad things to children. Um, which, you know, how conspiratorial is it when, you know, Epstein Island exists? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You know, there's some Indeed. of this. So, so, so what they do is they take the truth and then they embellish the truth and they make it something that it isn't mm -hmm. while, at the same, while that actually hides the truth. So the media can then focus on these wild stories that they basically somebody made up to, you know, scam people or whatever. And then nobody's focused on the actual story, which is Epstein has an island somewhere where he's selling little kids. Um, so anyway, Christopher Hallett, she shot him, Christopher Hallett, inside his home because he had been promising and promising and promising these same things that he was promising that he and his group promised to Cynthia Absog. And Neely just snapped because she was obviously unbalanced or whatever. But I do think that that Neely Blanchard has a story to tell. And I don't think that this was all her fault. I think that they gaslit her and terrorized her the way they did to Cynthia Absog. And one of them took a bullet for it. And I said that was going to happen. I told the FBI that was going to happen. So I'm just letting you know, this is where this goes. This is actually where this comes from. Like it's really deep. And the only people who really know about this are people are very few people. It's like me and like one other journalist that I know who covers this stuff, who's managed to stay away from that side of it. Um, and another guy that I know who's managed to like, he kind of, he kind of investigates them. So that's kind of interesting because he's got a lot of, uh, and I don't want to say his name just in case, because he's kind of controversial and, and in case he doesn't want me talking about it, I, I don't want to, but um, he's a good source for me. So um, this is, so, so then, then along comes the joke list. I hear that there's this, that Jeremy's talking about this person. And frankly, I had not ever heard of her, um, but I started looking at her Facebook contacts and I saw a lot of people I recognized from the <laughs> sovereign citizen groups. And I was like, Oh, I know what this is. And so the idea that, so my source tells me like, nobody really thinks that this person is a bad person, but she's really not smart because she falls for these lies about these false affidavits. And she then, you know, goes, she thinks she's a reporter. She thinks she's and she just doesn't know how to report things or, or look into facts. So I got this. This has been aimed at me, and I, I guess she <laughs> you ready wanted... to share it? Yeah. yeah cool. Okay. Uh, I saw this. I was like, you know what? This this sounds like butt hurt. That's <laughs> what it sounds like too, because it doesn't sound like just them doing something. It sounds like someone taking notice of what's being discussed. You know. Well, right, and obviously she's in touch with Lynette. Mm -hmm. And with John Cook and with all these people, she's uh, taking their side. She's decided to advocate for them. See, this is what's so strange about it is like, well, all you would have to do is really just look at the evidence that exists and realize who the person is, who's wrong here. Like if once the judge sees it, he's not going to be able to unsee it. Um, 
yet she can't see it. So is this an IQ problem? <sighs> Do you want to read it, Tug? I, I kind of want to hear this in your voice. <laughs> Yeah, give me one second. Give me one second. I'm answering. I'm answering. Uh, Larry, who uh, who asked me a question, because Larry is nice enough to ask me a question instead of, you know, streaming right over the top of me. That's really awesome of him. Very few people do that, by the way. So props to him. I know <laughs> he was just doing this. He was like, "Hey, uh, I'm going to stream tonight. When 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 do you think you know there will be a a place there?" And I was like, "Dude, that's really nice of you to ask." That was actually. nice of him. So I'm giving him love right there. You know, that's not anything I don't think he would have me saying there. Here we go. I know it's one. blurry. I know it's blurry. Just you know, calm uh, down. And I can't do anything about screenshots. That's how it was sent to me. I'll read it blurry to you. Whoa, whoa, like I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be so this is, from the, this is from the 13th here. Why does he keep referring to me in videos with anger? <laughs> with and a, I don't I know who why. he is. I don't know who he is. Is it like, is that Jeremy or I th you? I think Jeremy. Okay. I, I, think, I think Jeremy. I don't think I've ever talked about the joke list at all. You know, yeah, I, don't, I think that, we mentioned it one time. Somebody brought it up in the chat, and I think I said it. And I think Jeremy brought it up um, like I'm not going to give them any any headline or anything. So that's he he brought them up as the joke list, you know, right. in, in that interview. My concern is for Michelle in this horrific situation. Oh, I love like your name, Megan Fox. You know what's author. funny is that she tagged me. That's a tag, and I still never got it. <laughs> <laughs> For one, I'm never on Facebook. Like people had to send this to me. That's the only way that I ever that I saw this. That's that's usually the, I'm not a I'm never on Facebook, you know, because mm -mm. I'm banned. <laughs> because I'm banned on Facebook. You're banned on Facebook? I am, and I didn't even do anything bad. You know, I, I was just uh, I was thanking some people from a story with false allegations. I was uh, I was like, hey, you know, thanks for I went to a comic convention. And, or I'm sorry, an anime convention, you know, with a story. And I was thanking them for, for being nice there. And they were like, oh, you're banned. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. So Megan Fox, I like you get the little writing hand too. That's nice. Awesome. Uh -huh. I know riding the surface is your gig in this case. You what? Just ride, yeah. Ride that surface, baby. Riding the surface is my gig. Like, have you read anything that I write ever? <laughs> I mean, I get obsessed with things like I go way beyond where most people go. I will stick with something for way longer and go way deeper than anybody. I went so deep in this case, I found corruption in the entire Eighth Circuit Court. What did she do that? Like, is that did you find corruption in the Eighth Circuit Court, ma'am? Did you find an executive order signed by Governor Rick Scott sealing a, a former prosecutor's criminal record? Because I did, and it was all because I dug into this case. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Obvious, obviously not. <laughs> obviously not. I don't think she's ever dug past uh, anything Lynette probably gave her. But <laughs> let's continue. But you may want to think about what you're doing when you call the disabled victim a a kidnapper. What is that? I don't know. I don't know what a kidnap slash slash R is. This is uh, how oh, weird. But... She's trying to correct. I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe when I say it, it's weird or one of us says it. She would be like, this is how you pronounce it. <laughs> oh my God. Lynette's the uh the disabled victim, by the way. Oh yeah. There's so much in this like to go through right now. So oh. for one. Notice how she calls her Michelle, but everybody else in this story calls her Lynette. Like this woman cannot decide what her name is. Like no one knows what her name is, which I think is really weird. Secondly, sometimes, sometimes they call her Lacey or whatever stripper name is, which one? Which is <laughs> right. Michelle. So the kids call her Lacey. Like, yeah, like this one calls her Michelle. The court calls her Lynette. Um, I don't know. I never called her a kidnapper. And I also don't know if she's disabled or not. I know she's on disability. You, that you doesn't asked, mean she's disabled. You asked the question that if it would be kidnapping, you know, because of uh, the transportation, which was a, you can, a question. Yeah, yeah, and you can go back and look at, and listen to it. I actually said that sounds like kidnapping. That's Those are my words. That sounds like a kidnapping. And then I looked up publicly available information about the statute of limitations on kidnapping just in case 
the victim in this case felt like she was a victim. And if she does, she has recourse. She can go to the to a prosecutor. She can go to the police. She can go to the FBI. There is nothing defamatory in any way of informing someone who thinks they may have been kidnapped what they can do about it. We never called, we never said she was a kidnapper. I don't know. I know that that Ashley's memory is not so good because she was a child and a victim of abuse. So she is going to have trouble with her memory. That's just the way it is. It is absolutely 100% not defamation to ask the question or say that sounds like a kidnapping. And in case you think you were kidnapped, here's what you can do. Nonsense. Yeah, and you and it notes while you check statute of limitations to criminalize an innocent victim. Well, no one one for one thing, I don't know if she's innocent. I don't know if she's guilty, and I don't know if she's innocent. Well, I'm not going to make this yeah. victim too. Victim is loaded language too. <laughs> it's very this is loaded as you can get it or innocent well, and criminal and criminalized yeah. criminal like criminal. No, if she committed a crime, she's a criminal. If, if, the, the word here is if, if she committed a crime, she would be a criminal. And so I believe in the rule of law. I believe that people who commit crimes should be held accountable to those crimes. And if a victim believes they were a victim of a crime, I'm going to help them get justice for that crime, period. Now, it's up to the law to decide if Ashley was a victim of a crime. It's up to the police. It's up to the FBI. It's up to the prosecutor. All I did was tell her where she could go. That's not defamation. And and see, this is what makes me think she has a very low IQ because anyone with a brain knows that that is not what I was what I said. The next sentence kills me too. That's a very serious public accusation, and I am her advocacy journalist. There's your words right there. Your favorite. Her advocate. Wait, I, I need a different voice for this. <laughs> hold on, hold on. That is a very serious public accusation, and I am her advocacy journalist protecting her rights. Former Mayor Meek's rights, Don's rights, and elderly Mary's rights. I don't even know who these people are. I never, <laughs> I never mentioned any of these people. Like literally, except Lynette, Michelle, Lacey, whatever the hell her name is. And it's not a public accusation. It was a very serious question. That's it. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, and I don't know who these people are. Former Mayor Meeks, Don's rights. I don't know who Mary is. Who's Mary? Who the hell is Mary? They say they, will, they are all part of the story. <laughs> I will be reading a statement from the prosecutor in Mary's case in the next couple of months. Wait, we have to well, wait for well, a couple of fucking months? Wait, that's wait. not even a story that I'm covering. Well, even if I'm, it is, if it ties in, why are we? Why do we have to wait for months? You know, if Come it's, on, drop if your it's relevant, yeah. If it's relevant, where is it? And and if you are the person, the journalist, supposedly, who has this information that these people are all victims, these people you're saying, former Mayor Meeks, Don, uh, Mary, you, where's your where's your evidence? Where are the documents that, like, I remember the document that Tug and I read. Where are your documents? Where is your evidence? A Facebook post is not evidence, ma'am. You have very poor journalism skills. I'm sorry to say, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but this is not evidence. This is just someone vomiting their shit online. I like, I love the tactic that she uses coming up here. So she was like, I felt the urgency to make this one statement. You are mocking, <laughs> slandering, and shaming a disabled victim who is already enduring horrific ex abuse. I always from considered Cook? you, <laughs> from you, because I always considered you, you, to be authentic and a top shelf journalist. Uh huh. <laughs> um. Well, that part is true. Um, yeah, but, there you go. But it's interesting that the only evidence of abuse of Lynette that I know of is her own statement that John Cook abuses her. That's the only evidence of abuse we have that she is being abused. And as far as mocking and shaming, well, those two things are completely protected. I do not have any evidence that she is disabled. She says she is. That's not evidence of, of being disabled. And I would still mock and shame a disabled person if they were a, uh, a 
if they were a blithering idiot and harming people, I would do that. That is not above me. <laughs> that is, or below me, I should say. That, that is, is not, not below me. me. It's not, not above, above me or below me. I would just do that. Okay. I'm just saying it. Uh, as far as slandering goes, um, no, nothing I have said has been slander. Everything I have said has been either taken from evidence that I have or is my protected opinion. I can have an opinion about a person who behaves like this at a deposition. You are not a nice person. No, no. I can have an opinion my, that my she... mother's dead. My mother's not dead. I mean, this this is the same person. So you're telling me this is my truthful fucking person here? <laughs> yeah, this is a very incredible person. As a witness, like so, I cover a lot of cases as a as a lay person, as a member of the jury. Let's say. And if I'm evaluating a witness on the stand, I am looking for a lot of things to tell me if they're a truth teller. This woman does not pass the test in any way to me. Nothing about her passes the credibility test. Jeremy Hales and George, on the other hand, while Jeremy is bombastic and, um, you know, dramatic, I think those are fair things to say about him. He does not, there, nothing about his storytelling or the evidence that I've seen in his case leads me to believe that he is anything less than credible in telling the truth. Now, that's just my opinion. And I am allowed to have that opinion based on how I see people behave. It is no different than me saying uh, that, and by the way, Lynette Preston is a public person. She ran for public office. She is, by definition, a limited purpose public person. A person. And so the, there's no difference between me saying that I don't find uh, the guy running for, stu for, for, for school board in my neighborhood, I don't find him credible, than saying the same thing about her. That's not slander. That's not defamation in any way. I don't find her credible. So what? So what? Prove to me that you are then. Drop some, drop some truth bombs out there, Lynette. Show us how credible you are. That nope. anything you've said is real. I'll take the uh, first of all. I uh, I totally throw away the descriptors. You know the disabled victim, but I'll take the mocking. Fuck yes, I'm mocking. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, slandering. No, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Start to slander a moron like that, <laughs> but mocking. Oh hell yeah! And I I haven't even started yet. That's the thing, because the further I go down this, I'm like, man, this really is a rabbit hole full of stupid. You know, if I don't laugh and mock, I'll drown in it. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm, am I really not supposed to mock and shame a woman who poops in a bucket next to a child she says is sick? She She's screaming. She's doing a, a, a deposition on a freaking tablet. Delete, delete part of it. it yeah and he's screaming out the window to, to freaking john get Cole. away from the window john oh my god wow and my baby fell down <laughs> i mean oh, and not I have that one. my child just fell down <laughs> <laughs> i mean seriously come like, on like the, come on this is everything she's complaining about everything that the jokalist is complaining about are things that lynette did to herself that she put out there that 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 thing about her suffering enduring horrific abuse the only evidence of that is from lynette's own mouth that john cook abuses her that's what she says i'm not saying that's true that's what she says I don't I I don't really believe anything Lynette says so I'm I am of the opinion that that's probably not true <laughs> but I don't know I don't know but she's the one who said it and we we had another person saying you know live that she said that about multiple other people too Exactly Yeah so I mean you know and again a a journalist maybe not an advocacy journalist but a journalist a real one yeah maybe they would uh, take all of that into account but anyway. She also said that she felt the urgency to make this one statement. Well, as a journalist, if you feel an urgency to publish something, you don't publish it without the evidence. Yeah, you drop that elbow on somebody. You fuck Frankly, them up. That's what I do. What Ooh. she is saying right here about me, that is untrue. It's all untrue. So, you know, be careful, ma'am, because you're publishing things on the Internet about me that I can prove are untrue.
Except for the authentic and top self journalist. She'll take that. That is definitely true. I'll take that all day long. I I may... I may add that to my bio. In fact, I'm going to go do that on Twitter right now. What does it say? What is it? What is you're, it again? You're authentic and you're a and top, top shelf. shelf journalist. Yes, yeah, that's going on shelf. there. Uh-huh. That's going on yeah. there right now. Authentic cool. top shelf journalist. Yep. I mm. like it. Yeah. Medium smart. I mean, smart, that's the way you go. Like if I'm like at Walmart. Yeah. yeah Award winning. Authentic. <laughs> authentic. Top shelf journalist. Mm. That's what I'm doing it right now. You cannot stop me. I'm doing it now. Thank you, Jokalist. Medium smart, award-winning, authentic, top-shelf journalist. <laughs> that totally doesn't mock, shame, or slander disabled <laughs> victims. <laughs> uh, top-shelf, let's see, top, I had to delete some things. Top-shelf journalist and author and broadcaster at PJ Media who does not, who doesn't, mock anyone <laughs> who doesn't mock anyone <laughs> he doesn't deserve it yes we call, we, <laughs> we call those on, on this side of the and then on this side of the screen we call those umbrella terms bam thank you thank you all right how about we do this uh authentic let's see medium smart award-winning authentic top shelf journalist and author and broadcaster who doesn't slander <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but definitely mocks. <laughs> I definitely but definitely <laughs> doesn't slander. <laughs> but definitely <laughs> mocks. Uh, definitely mocks. Uh, yep. That's yep. it. That, that's it, it. Save. <laughs> Done. Oh. You should Done. You, you guys can you, go you, check you that out. To, you need to you need to give her a post and thank her about this one. You'd be like, thank you for the urgency in your post. I really did need to change my Twitter bio. <laughs> oh my god oh, she also said i've worked with some wonderful people that mutually think highly of you and i know who those people are and some of them i think very highly of too i don't know if they've actually worked with her though i think worked with is a, a stretch <laughs> shall we say I think she probably spoke to them once or twice. Like she has a picture of my good friend, Rachel Bruno on her, um, on her page on Facebook. And I will just say Rachel Bruno is a very, she's a close friend. She's a person who has been through some serious hell with CPS. She won over $2 million, I think from the children's hospital and CPS because they took her child without a warrant. Rachel has written a book, um, Rachel Bruno, you can go and get that book on Amazon. It is called Fractured Hope. It's a really good book. She has a wonderful story. It kind of bothers me, though, to see this person using her photograph to give this person legitimacy when I know that she probably just met her at an event that she was speaking at. And then she uses her photograph in her banner. Like it gives her legitimacy because because Rachel is a totally legit advocate and and person you know, in this fight. I take the work with, it's kind of like yesterday I found a raccoon, like going through my garbage. We weren't working together. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was just going through my garbage. Oh my God, Tuck. That's the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of going through your garbage, ever. you know, <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't saying. say we were working together. <laughs> yeah. yeah I would. Going through my trash. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I would absolutely question her saying that she knows people that she's worked with people who who are the people that are connected with me i doubt that very much she probably exchanged an email with them once you know uh, she's by the way she put in this parentheses i'm not a reporter not a no, reporter there no know, shit yeah really i would have never guessed that i handle very few cases huh. <laughs> I, I don't understand I, the handle. You're not a you're not a reporter. You're a you're journalist, a... though. That's kind of the same thing. It's interchangeable. Yeah, if you look yeah. in the th- thesaurus under reporter, you're going to find journalist. It's one and the same. See, so I don't, I don't consider myself a reporter or a journalist. I'm just here, you know, and laughing right. at stupid shit. See, I don't I don't consider that. You know, that way when somebody wants to be like, oh, my God, you don't have any journalistic integrity. I'm like, no, well, I'm not a you, journalist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I I'm a Lego journalist. 
I'm definitely a Lego journalist. I have I've discovered the new category of Lego journalism, and I'm holding on to that for as long as possible. I think it's going to be the next big thing. You know, you remember Gonzo journalism and Hunter S. Thompson. Well, I have created Lego journalism. Hunter S. Thompson, my favorite <laughs> quote from him. He was he was sky high ripped one time, and he he, he literally he said this. He was like. Heroin is a vitamin, and I was like, "What? <laughs> what? Uh, I can't remember the rest of the quote." He was saying, "You know, I'm not saying you should take it all the time, but it is a vitamin." <laughs> what? Yeah. No oh, man, Hunter S. Thompson has some just whacked out quotes. Oh Lord, he's uh, he's funny. He wrote some he wrote some great uh great books, great articles. But yeah, we've heard about his uh, free time too. Oh, DJ Radis says that he's written songs and parodies about her. We're going to have to look some of those up. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Let's see. She's sad to see this situation, Megan, because you, you're 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 so great. She's yeah, I'm, I'm letting you. her down so much. Oh, you're you're such a disappointment to me, ma'am. I don't care about your disappointment. Cry more. I've heard, I've heard so many people try to pull stuff like that too. I used to really love what you did, that umbrella guy, but then you said this thing I didn't like. <laughs> And, and that's I'm always, like, it's always a lie. Yeah, They never I'm liked you to lie, begin with. with. Yeah. Cause you know, I make it pretty clear, you know, I'm going to say something. If, if you come to this channel, I will eventually say something that you don't like. And if that is a problem, I appreciate you being here. I do. I, I don't mean this. I'm not telling you to go away. I'm just telling you, I will offend you one day. And when I offend you, if you can live and let live, great. That's that's awesome. You don't have to agree with me. Talk shit in the chat. I don't care. But, <laughs> right. Talk shit yeah. about me all day long. I say the same thing whenever I get an influx of new subscribers on YouTube. I'm like, I'm looking forward to the great disappointment because uh, the great disappointment is coming soon. You know, yep. one, a bunch of you are going to be like, I had no idea that she was A, B or C. And now that I know, I can't stay here for another second. <laughs> okay see ya don't let the door hit you on the way out you know so when people say this to me like oh oh i had so much respect for you and now you've disappointed me well cry more bitch i don't care i don't know why you think i care i my whole life i have been disliked okay i am i am the queen of being disliked and i don't give a shit and i gotta tell you i thank my fourth grade bullies every damn day because they gave me uh, the ability to not give a shit about what people think about me. I don't care what they say about what I say. I don't care if they try to cancel me. I don't give a shit. I, yeah. I really don't. That's my dad coming out. I don't give a shit. You you're going to either love me or you're going to hate me. And I do not <laughs> care either way. Yeah, I always look at it. I'm like, well, I, I'd like to think the geography here because it gave me a... A really slow type of speech, and I have a nice kind of accent and a dry sense of humor. And, but I'm an asshole. <laughs> it just covers all gonna, that up. <laughs> you know, because I mean, you're going to beat somebody with a fucking hammer. Hammer time. Hammer time. <laughs> I wish I could say that to somebody one time. I actually mean it, but like I could never do that. I believed you though when you said it. I was like, holy shit, don't push tug. <laughs> well, I mean it. Some of these people online, man, you know, I, well, you, you know, you can say anything nasty you want, but when you, you, you admit that you want to drive people toward these horrible ends and stuff. Yeah. You would never say that. My point was you'd never say that to a person's face. Cause if you did, I'd beat you with a hammer. I'd take my hand. <laughs> That was my if you did. And then we just found out you're like six four with size 14 shoes. And I was like, oh, I might pay to see Tug beat someone with a hammer. That would be yeah, good like, stuff. I, that that, people good could, like, it, was, it was funny. Like uh, in 2019, got all these threats. You know, people are going to come to the <laughs> conventions and everything. And then, you know, I'm not in shape, but I, I'm just tall. I'm a, I'm a bigger guy. So, you know, uh, when... Uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm running around with a freaking umbrella hockey mask on and stuff, and nobody showed up. It was kind of weird. I kept expecting all that hate. <laughs> I was to just going to say, did you see any of them? Did any of them come no, by? No. no, and they hey. lived there. They lived in these areas. Oh, like, that's a bunch funny. Of, yeah. So there was even a gathering. There was a crying fest over because Kato <laughs> Law was there. Yeah, they had a little. They had a little. They had a little cry fest at a bar that was like. Two miles Wasn't that the away. one that Rakeda was posting a picture? It was like, I can smell this picture through the screen. 
<laughs> I don't remember. Was there that. a picture of them? They were like squeezed into a, a booth and they were like three or four, 400 pound guys. Oh, uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the same one. I don't think that's it. Oh, it no. sounds like them. Uh, we Do all you... went to, uh, we went to, let's see, it was him, Ty, uh, Ty Beard, and uh, Hero Hay, YouTuber Hero Hay. <laughs> we were all up on a panel. There's some love. If you've never seen that, by the way, you can watch me uh, try to get fed uh, jelly beans through a hockey mask. That was very odd. You know, yeah. so were you I was just going to say, so do you wear a mask at these things? I did. I did then. I still probably I, I like it. It's fun. But uh, that time you it wear wasn't a hockey mask. I, I wore a it's a um, there. There's a. Um, he's he's on Twitter. He's, he goes by six, six, six. He um, he has one of the original Jason molds from Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it'd be cool. You know, he makes great masks. He's a, he's an actual prop designer. So he's worked on movies. He's, I mean, he's a professional and I was like, yo man, hook me up with a mask. So he hooked me up with a mask. Somebody else hooked me up with one too. They actually uh, built a cooling fan in because after I wore a mask, oh, I had, wow. yeah, I had so much um, respect for cosplayers after that, because that time I couldn't take the mask off. You know, I, I, I was wearing it. Nobody knew who I was at the time. They never, <laughs> like there was nothing known about me at the time there. So I couldn't take it off at all. I was like, I'm going to oh. die in this thing, you know, wearing it for I can't nine wear hours masks, at a time. Not for Halloween, not for anything. Oh. I can't wear them. I cannot wear a mask. So that you, you probably. I still might do it though. I don't know, man. It's kind of, I've been to a few things though. And people didn't know I was there because that's one of the beauties of. Uh, because nobody knows what you look like, really. Yeah. I mean, there's been like that one picture, but. You know. If I speak like this, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I feel like I would recognize your voice <laughs> anywhere, yeah. anywhere. I feel like if I heard you in a line at a checkout counter, I'd be like, "Oh my god, it's Tug." No, the but maybe I'm wrong. Stuff. I mean, look at James O'Keefe. My God, this man leaves Project Veritas, where he has all these young journalists working for him and doing all these honey pots and going undercover. He leaves. He's on his own, and his new gig is now putting on glasses like Clark, Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah, and li that. literally and going. It it works. No one knows who he is. He just eats the Clark Kent disguise. I saw it's that. incredible. He's picking up gay dudes in the Biden administration. Yeah. Like you cannot believe this man I is a sexy beast. They cannot say no to him. It's so fantastic that no one recognizes him. And he's so famous. If I were Bi Joe Biden, I would have like a massive emergency meeting with every branch of my administration, the DOJ, the, you know, everybody, the Pentagon, everybody. I'd be like, all right, we're going to sit down today and everyone is going to watch videos of James O'Keefe. You watch out for this man. Don't go to dinner with James O'Keefe. And it's almost like, it's like, the, even if they did that, he's still going to pick up these weirdos that they've hired who cannot keep their mouths shut. You would think any, any news organization or anything from any social or political, if you have people out there that will wreck you maybe you should train your staff not oh to God. sit down and have drinks with them <laughs> and to talk and to just openly i want to know how like o'keefe gets people to talk so openly without like i mean you know I, these people just spill their guts well you sometimes. know why they spill their guts because they think they're gonna get laid he is so convincing that he's you know interested in them that's all he has to do is show some interest that's it and that that's they will say anything in order to get a date. It's bizarre. I need to. I, I'm going to remember that next time. I need, I need some information. I'm going to throw on my. I'm going to throw on my uh, my most charming voice. Mm, you know. But Don't come I, out but, with the hammer threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Avoid that. Yeah, just keep the hammer. Keep the hammer low in the back. <laughs> keep the hammer behind your back. Oh. Okay, where were we? I lost. I don't point. know. Oh, uh, we were at a set situation. Here we are. Okay. But I know you are going to keep going on what you are building. So right, right there. First of all, yes, you're you're going to keep going with the story. But that's not what that says. That's not she's what it saying, says. Yeah, she's saying you built a narrative from the ground floor. And you're going to keep going with a specific narrative. See, now that's not true. If if I was given some, uh, you know, bombshell information that proved to me that, I don't know, the stepdaughters are lying and that report was fraudulent and fake, I would tell you, I would report it. We would absolutely talk about it. Wouldn't I'd we? love to know how that, that report, like, again, you have 
you don't just have people in mental health talking to an alleged victim. They're saying, we saw this ourselves. So even if you even if you had some document where you were like, hey, this person's a liar, this this uh, kid's a liar, which I'm not calling them that, by the way. I want to make that very clear. I'm yeah, just saying. Me either, because I don't say, believe that's true. No, I all. don't either. I don't believe that at all. I, you know, it, it troubled me what I read there. And it, you know, and then watching video, watching body language, I have seen so many freaking victims. I have worked with so many victims that the body language, just the, the way people, you can tell when someone's drawing inwardly versus when they fake it. I mean, it just. And what happens to their eyes, like where they're looking and what happens when they're recalling things. And like when it's, and that there's so much in, in the way Ashley is and the way she tells her story. That's so credible, including the things where she's saying, I don't have a good memory of this. I have almost yeah. no memory of my childhood. That actually confirms what she is saying. It does yeah, not. That's, that, that's what happens with, uh, to be, I mean, again, you can think of that in anything. If you, you just think about it in bad memory. And again, I'm not comparing a bad memory to abuse, but I'm saying that is bad memories. It's just taken to, you know, the nth degree. But you think with any bad thing that happens you could have a a thousand good things happen on the same day you have one bad thing happen and that bad thing that's what you reflect on well if you're a child and you have the horrific happening to you if there were good things going on how do you remember that after a while you know just it gets buried under that and you forget it i mean you forget childhood anyway as you move forward you know you keep certain memories you keep the the biggest the loudest memories and the loudest ones yeah abuse that's going to be the that was also thing. one of the reasons why amber heard was so unbelievable was because she had these detailed memories of this alleged abuse these so many details she had so but then when it was convenient for her she didn't remember it was I only mean, when it was convenient when she was getting nailed down to a specific thing like wait where were his hands again but but when she gave her testimony, you're like, which hand was on the bottle? Which one? Which hand was bleeding? And what? how was he holding you down with the bloody stump of a finger and also doing this thing with a bottle? So she only would forget details when she was being backed into a corner. She had all these crazy details, though, when she was telling her story. I sat there and stared at the dirty carpet. Dirty carpet. Or as mm. I sat in the car and leaned my head on the window and watched the breath on the wind. What? You did what? That none of that, or like Laura Owens, as I wandered around the streets of uh, R- Reykjavik and in, in my sleeveless dress in a snowstorm. No, no, you didn't. Okay, this is not the way that victims remember stories, period. It's just, well, and the, the herd thing's even worse. You know, the <laughs> can't cry, can't emote bad acting i mean just oh, there's so much there, there's like a ton of that if you ever want to watch something and see how uh, a false accuser works you watch that that, mm-hmm. that is textbook textbook it's so bad anyway i'm getting off topic though you'll get me on that topic i'll never get off that topic i gotta go back to this <laughs> but it's a good it's a good indicator though of like when someone's telling the truth versus when mm-hmm. someone isn't and like we will always have her but- as a as a you know statue to lying for the rest of our lives, which is great. Well, it also <laughs> you know? shows the the degree to which. See, I get people who complain all the time. I, I obsessively cover things. It's what I do. I will I will fixate on one topic, and I'll cover. I covered fucking Depp and Heard for years. That's because every scrap of paper that came out, we covered it live. We covered everything live. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm the best resource on it, but I felt like I knew that case. <laughs> you know, I knew it pretty well. And and with this, it's just like you're saying, you know, you consume every piece of it. And yeah, you formulate an opinion on it. You're a human being. You formulate it as you go along. But it, you could change it. The thing with Jeremy Hale is that he's documented all of this. So I can walk through this voyage on how we got here. I don't have to take his word. It's all right. there, you know, and he kept right. pictures and everything else. I mean, anytime he talks about it, you know, he can. Oh, and by the way, the one video that they're circulating that is allegedly supposed to show me that Jeremy Hales is a terrible person and a bad person and a liar is him losing his temper on John Cook and calling him some salty names. 
That's it. That's it. And I'm like, wait, that's it? This is what I'm supposed... Uh, well, he says he's a Christian and he uses language like that. Sir, I'm a Catholic and there isn't a word that hasn't come out of my mouth that you <laughs> haven't heard out of a sailor, okay? Like that doesn't have anything to do with your status as a Christian or a believer in God, okay? Period. That That is not evidence that Jeremy Hales is a bad person. Bad language? That he lost his temper? Tug here said, told somebody he was going to beat him with a hammer. I still love him. And he had a good reason for saying that. He had very good reason for, sometimes there's good reason for losing your temper. Sometimes there's a good reason for, for laying it out the way it is and for telling people who are uh, attacking you and your family. There's, sometimes there's a good reason for telling them where the line yeah. is. And you, if you cross this fucking line, you better, you better watch out. Otherwise yeah. you're going to just going to let people, what, what you're going to let people abuse you. You're going to you, let people well, abuse your the, family. Word abuse. So you respond to abuse, you know, as a, as a man, especially, you know, men, men responding to other men, especially, you know, or quasi men, whatever you want to call this fucking people. <laughs> you know, when, when he responded to that, yeah, he was responding to him like a man, you know, he was brought, yeah, there I mean, is nothing unusual about that video. He's responding like any man would respond when threatened. And it's actually like kismet that I played that thing. <laughs> he actually responds today. better than you would. Okay. You you act like some of these people out here, you know, like like me, for example. I'm strapped all the time. I'm, I'm in Tennessee. I'm strapped. You come up to me and start fucking with me. <laughs> that's not going to go. That that won't go well. And I don't mean that to be like pounding on my chest. That's just the, the culture here. And I know that's Florida too. I know what the South is like. I know what small town Southern living is like. So somebody comes up to you, the nicest thing they can do is call you a bunch of fucking messed up words because they could do a lot worse to you. You know what we don't what we don't see in that video because it's edited, because John Cook edited. We don't see what happened right before that. We don't see um we don't see if he said something nasty about George, which which Jeremy reports he has said many times, telling her, you know, to suck his tick. And stuff like that. Right. So you say that to a man's woman in front of him, and you think he's not going to say Photoshop pictures and stuff too. Yeah, the, you think that. he's not going to have words for you? Like, what, what, what planet are you on? Have you not I, known any men? I just, I, I'm bothered by the whole. Oh, you're a Christian, don't I, I seem to remember Christ losing his temper with uh, he flipped lenders. a couple tables. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't seem to take kindly to the the fact that people were being abused. Hmm. You know what else he did that gets overlooked in that same passage? He sat down before he went in there and flipped tables and he fashioned a whip. Think about that. That was premeditated. So he sat down, he got materials to make a whip to beat people with. Literally got some stuff like, I don't know, a couple switches or some reeds. I don't know. Well, how do you make a whip? Some leather straps? I don't know. But he sat down and fashioned a whip first. So as he was fashioning this whip, I'm thinking, Jesus is thinking, man, am I going to go beat some ass? This whip is going to be, I'm going to beat ass today. Right? So if I remember live streaming from my car and someone notices a whip in it, no, nah, I'm just, that's, that's my faith, baby. That's my faith. It's Christ-like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, flipping over tables at yard sales. No. <laughs> You're like, that's not what it means to us. <laughs> Jesus okay. used a whip. Tug uses a hammer. It's just pretty <laughs> much the same thing. I'm an MC hammer. Damn it, people. I'll beat you with MC <laughs> hammer. It's hammer time. Yeah, I'm going to pick MC hammer up. I hear it. Those balloon pans, actually. God, man. I remember that stuff from back when. <laughs> <laughs> remember people wearing those things around? Why were we wearing that? I don't, I oh don't my understand. God. The, the 80s was like fashion. Like It was like <laughs> 80s fashion was like a... I don't know, like a, a a table full of scraps threw up on somebody. And they're like, here's fashion. The hair in some point. I mean, my God, man. Oh, so, <laughs> oh. And then, then you start birthing rat tails. And oh, anyway, let's, let's read. <laughs> we'll get on 80s fashion. Somehow. I know. Now we're on 80s fashion and yeah. Aquanet somehow. Oh. I'll, guy tell liner. You, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story on Aquanet. Have stuff. you ever, have you ever uh, worn guy liner, Tug? No. Uh-uh. No. Oh, come on. Not face. even a little. I painted my face like crazy like before, but I've never worn eyeliner now. <laughs> well, that was very big in the 80s for the men to, to, to do the guy liner, yeah. just like the hair bands, you know. 
Yeah, no. Did I'm you not. have a mullet? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You never had a mullet? Uh -uh. No. Did you know they're coming back in style? My son wants a mullet. My yeah. husband is very against it, but I said he can do it because that's what the kids are doing. So would you draw the yeah. line at a rat tail? Would you? Be I like, would no. absolutely <laughs> draw the line at a rat tail. Fucking like rat tail! Oh, those are the worst. Uh, the, the but people I'm, who have I'm rat down tails. with a mullet because he's got curly hair like mine, so he could have a curly mullet. I'm I'm down with it. <laughs> Clayton Eckert has a curly mullet. Oh, speaking of, did anybody find the Easter egg in the thumbnail? Oh yeah, here's, I'm just gonna say that and see if you can find it. I'm not gonna give it Here's a little hint in in a in a lot of no. I'm just gonna note this if, because I want people to notice this. In a lot of them, um, and, and it's becoming more and more. When Megan Fox is on here, you may or may not find Clayton Eckerd stuck in the thumbnail somewhere. <laughs> just randomly in thumbnails. <laughs> that one big that one big live stream where we we talked about all that. I stuck him right in the front. <laughs> that was so funny. And I'm like, were you going to talk about Clayton? He's like, uh, no. no I, just just made it no, I just thought it would be funny, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you look at this one, yeah, it's it's got a little Clayton in it. <laughs> I Rhea Norman, did. Rhea Norman found him. Uh, I was gonna put him on her head like a hat, actually, because the <laughs> way that the way that that cuts off, it's a, it, it's a. It, for some reason, when I when I cut the background, it rounded him off. So I was like, man, he looks just like a hat. But I was like, not <laughs> noticeable. So, <laughs> uh, all right, let me read the rest. All of this right. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're professional. Okay, okay. professional. Yeah, professional. Voice. That's that, that's my mantra. <sighs> professional. Yeah. Professional. I do. I, you'll hear me say that. <laughs> I know. I I you know. Uh, it's a big story, and I wish you the best results. Oh, Michelle, do you know? Yeah, Michelle did not kid in. She anyone? she thinks that that's a bad word somehow. Kid in. Kidnap. <laughs> I mean, she's, why didn't she do this up here? I don't know. She thinks she's fooling the algorithm or something. Maybe she thinks that the Oh man, the three people who comment on boy, well, that could have really gotten restricted further. <laughs> you know what? I don't even I know where she posted uh, this. I should check my Facebook notifications. Maybe she's tagged me in other shit that I haven't seen. Yeah, here, let me let me let me let me let me shame her real quick. I'm going to go on Twitter and I'm going to just type a random word. I think I'll type the word hat rack and I'm just going to post it. And I bet you I get more traffic on the word hat rack <laughs> than she gets with that. Let's Do see. it. I'm going to. I'm doing it right now. Do Give it. I'll second. retweet it. Oh my God. Hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, uh, that's how uh, the pickle thing started. I did that. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> People get retreating it. They were like, hashtag Tugs Pickle. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, that wasn't what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I was talking about. Wait, okay. that's not showing up for me. Did oh, you wait. already hit tweet? No, no, I, I misspelled it. I didn't spell oh, no. it the way it needed to be. I put a CK and it needs like just a K in it. Just a K. Yeah, there we go. It's it's posting. Uh, give it a second. It's got that, right. it's got that delay on it, you know. I gotta give refresh. It a, give it one minute. It'll take it a minute. Like that's how <laughs> An long it takes. Entire minute? Yeah, it takes it a minute to post. Jeez. Yeah, yeah that's that delay for uh, for Twitter. I don't. Part of it's uh, the. There it goes. It po posted finally. Hat that rack. Is so weird. Yes. Hat Please rack. like and share. Hat rack. <laughs> 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 it already yeah. has two, re seven likes, and you've already <laughs> beat her. I've already in four it. seconds. In four seconds, now it's up to thirteen. Hat <laughs> rack. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is people are like, "What are you on? Twenty six <laughs> now. <laughs> Hat rack. Twenty eight. <laughs> Oh 20 30 now 30 likes 17 uh, retweets damn amazing that's uh, that's awesome see get on my level <laughs> i'm telling you yeah. you might as well you might as well and you know what i would i would write out the word kidnap <laughs> i should have i should have been like hat rack kidnapped but hat <laughs> oh, rack, well. kidnap hat rack <laughs> <laughs> personally i like hashtag hammer hat rack <laughs> hammer hat rack we should have a hammer hanging on the hat rack with me. Oh, you should. You need it. You definitely need that. Oh my God. Um, okay, so now I'm in my I'm in my Facebook page that I'm never in. I'm going to go to my messages. Does it tell me if I've been tagged in things? 
I have no idea. I'm banned. I, I can't tell I you even, what it's like. I, I don't even know how this works. Uh, I really I don't, don't even know how it works. Like, it doesn't really tell See, me. You got a sp do you have a spam folder on there? You might have some cool stuff in your spam folder. Oh, yeah. I never even check. I never check this, you guys. Never, ever tried to contact me on Facebook. I, I look at it once a year. Like, yeah. once a year. You can, you can uh, find me on lo uh, Locals or... Twitter. The Twitter is the one that I'm more likely, but I'm still lazy about chat. I mean, I get, I get a lot of tags and stuff. I don't see stuff. And then, you know, uh, I mean, I, have, I try to respond to as many people as I can, but I can't respond to everyone. It's, uh, oh, I tried that during the debt. I was like, holy God, I got 10,000 dms one day i was like I, I can't i don't even know what to do with this <laughs> wow that's yeah. that's that's beyond my level i'm uh, pretty much at the i can respond to everybody still which is actually really nice um i don't know how you deal with that that's insane i'm looking to see if there's a way i can like search my notifications but i don't see that there's like a, a thing to do that so i have so many of them that i can't i can't even look at this i see I, every time i try i end up shutting it down because i get i get frustrated but she says that Michelle didn't kid in anyone. CPS arranged it. Have you pulled what? the background checks? Wait, on what? CPS arranged what? Uh, to, to take her. To oh, oh, I think what she's saying is for her to go with her. Well, look, we honestly don't know. We don't know. I, I asked um, Ashley if she knew how it happened and if there was a court proceeding she said she didn't know and she said her father told her that there wasn't one now could was he telling the truth we don't know D does he remember we don't know maybe there was a court process i don't know but there's also a court process in idaho taking her away from her so okay sorry you can continue talking well here's something wasn't it um wasn't it wasn't dhs involved well, right. They're over DCFS, so sometimes they call them DHS. Well, CP, so yeah, CPS is, you know. Department I mean, of Human know. Services is the main. Um, in, yeah, the over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird when, like, you know, when I don't I don't call at the same <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Like we, depending on CPS is, if I'm contacting CPS, I'm contacting a specific people specific you know uh child i'm going to child protectives or anyway have you uh have you pulled the uh background checks on the parents to see why come on it's your big gig full of touch notch memes she's um, a, she's a fan you know what the if there were yeah right if there were for one no why would i do background checks on ashley's parents what why would i do that I do understand that there are some, uh, I know that there's a background of some interesting stuff there. Not interesting. I, I shouldn't say interesting. Um, there's, there, she had a hard life. She had a hard life and she had a, uh, a bad gig, but I'm not investigating her parents. And it is possible uh, that she was given to Lynette. I never said otherwise. It's possible that she was with her uh, legally. I just asked the question if she was. It was no, just totally we, allowed. We talked about how that freaking that statement that we read was one of the strongest when one, one the strongest word ones we've ever seen mm -hmm. by far. And on top of that, again, it wasn't the only thing. Again, we had we had her come in herself. We had another family member come in. So I mean, yeah, we, there's a lot of talking points there. Our, she's just flat out calling uh calling the person making allegations calling her a, a liar mm -hmm. i mean but again she's done that for a long time apparently you know and it it's really it is kind of jacked up to to see proof by the way we could see it in the middle of one of the videos you pointed it out and then she talked about it too where she comes in and she starts sharing and harassing her while she's talking about this stuff mm -hmm. in a live stream that's that's beyond weird and fucked up mm -hmm. Let's see. It's your big gig full of top-notch memes. Okay, for one. You're the pro, too. You are the pro. Is, I should have put the pro on there. Uh, <laughs> it's your big gig. No, this is not my big gig. I've had bigger. I had an entire circuit court had to recuse itself because of a story I wrote. That was my big gig. I mean, 
That was one of them. The other big gig I had landed me on Fox News. Actually, there were two other ones. So my Tucker Carlson hit was probably one of the big <laughs> ones, and which was an article I wrote that went super viral about Christine Blasey Ford and the uh, Supreme Court process with uh, what's his name, the beer drinking one. That that uh that hat rack by the way has 150 lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i do not appreciate you making fun of my ability on facebook to gather followers i am being shadow banned it's very clear <laughs> that i have been shadow banned by these censorious censorial people who don't want me to get out my information about all the good work i do with advocating and journalisming yeah advocating you forgot journalism -er. You forgot. You're the pro, and I'm just the advocate journalist. There you go. Good Lord. Uh, so, no, this is not my big gig. My biggest story that I ever had, you've probably heard about, I was on Jesse Waters because I broke the story about the 10-year-old grape victim that the left was using to push their abortion narrative and their abortion, uh, what was the word? Uh, not hysteria. That's the word. And so they had reported this story about this 10 year old in Ohio who were, was graped and yet none of the reporters tried to find out who did it. And I found out who did it. <laughs> it was an illegal alien. That was unfortunate for the media because as soon as they found that out, as soon as we put that out there, uh, the story died. Right. It, was, it was international until I blew the lid off of that. And uh, then all of a sudden, nobody wanted to talk about it anymore. So that was probably my big my big gig. I think that that definitely outranks this YouTube stuff. <laughs> like, but okay, you are the pro. Yes, I am a pro. That is correct. And I'm covering the town hall story that involves Michelle. I'm not covering the 2006 story. You are. <laughs> well, I'm not covering the 2006 story. Really, I'm covering what's happening to Jeremy Hales yep. and the side stories that kind of pop up. Yep. The 2006 story is a is a unfortunate thing that popped up that landed on my desk that I couldn't ignore, especially after seeing that Ashley had come out to tell her story and it wasn't getting as wide um, viewing as I thought it should have. Yeah. Uh, I like this next part, though. Try to collect the 2006 August document following your prized document in which the court threw out the case as fraudulent. That would include your prized document. Okay, let me, I have a few questions here. I have a few questions. One, a 2006 investigation into child ab abuse through DHS or CPS or DC, whatever you want to call it, is not searchable by me. It is not, it's sealed, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it is always sealed. The only people who are allowed to have access to those records are parties to the case and the government. So if Ashley had that file and gave it to me, she could do that, but I cannot FOIA them for it. And this is one of the problems actually with um, DCF and child services because they operate in total secrecy. So mm. unless you have someone who is a party to the case, you can't, as the press, get your hands on the documents unless they were filed as public filings in the court. But if it's in family court and it involves juvenile court or these abuse cases, nine times out of 10, it's sealed. So I get my court documents through a party to the case always when it comes to this stuff. If, and now here's my second question, if the jokalist has this document that she claims exists and she has not published it, that right there is journalistic malpractice. She is allowing then in that case, she is allowing a, a, a story to be out there that she has evidence that can, you know, contradicts it. So, wh and why would she tell me this if she, it, without posting it? If you have this document, ma'am, send it to my email. My email is meganfox.writer at protonmail.com. And I will evaluate it for its accurate, for its, you know, evidentiary value. And if it has any weight to it and I can confirm it, I will absolutely report it. Now, if th this is what I've been told now, that allegedly, and I hate even saying this because I, f I feel like it's 
but I'm just, I have to, cause it's out there and people are posting it. Allegedly, this alleged document that doesn't seem to exist because no one has sent it to me. So it seems really strange that they didn't do that. Says that the child who we know is Ashley recanted her story at some point and was given back to uh, Lynette. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. If even if that is true, it still does not change the fact that that she is a a child abuse victim, right? Child abuse victims very often go back to their abusers. Yeah. So do domestic violence victims. Yeah. Very often they will lie for them. They will go back to them. If that happened, and I'm not saying that it did, I'm saying that that's what these people are saying. If that happened, it still doesn't change my opinion. Now, I would like, if there is that document, go ahead and send it to me. No, not just that. I would love an explanation for, again, we had other people witness abuse. So how exactly does that work into, oh, well, she recanted. Uh, okay. Even if you're going to, even if you could pull that up, what about the rest of it? It doesn't bury well, that. Yeah. And I keep hearing, oh, well, it's, um, uh, you know, it was determined to be fraud, the entire report. Oh, really? So a psychologist who's still practicing today, by the way, Still, we, we verified that. We verified that she's a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist is still practicing in a different state. So she had, she witnessed, multiple people in her office witnessed abuse and wrote about it. And I'm supposed to believe they all made that up? For what purpose? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> there's not a, there's not a case big enough to, to burn your practice to the ground like that that i mean there there might be a case big enough if you're talking about prime time money some people but like the kind of case right. we're talking about there's this, money. this is not yeah it. right there's no money here this is this is um yeah and also about, consider that they had put ashley in like didn't she talk about being in a group home and she wasn't like they didn't have anywhere to put her and like who knows what kind of situation was going on that she may have chosen to go back to get out of whatever situation she, fo our foster care system is insane. Oh, it's, a, it's awful. It's, it's bad. It's awful. Like so sometimes people, you go back to the devil, you know, than the devil you don't. And I'm not going to judge her if that's what happened. I'm not going to judge. And I'm not saying that it did. I have not talked to Ashley about this. And I don't even think that there's no reason uh, to dig into this. There really isn't. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to find. And like you said, you're not going to, if somebody wants to send you a document there, do it. Do it. Why didn't do you it. post something about it? I mean, you why didn't she fraud. post it? Why didn't she post the document? You know why? She doesn't fucking have it. If you have it, post it. Post it. Let's see it. Like I said, I use I use my. You know, you know why you you have three people that pay attention to you because you're a fucking joke. <laughs> That's why. Because ultimately, you can come out and ramble, but you don't show anything. You don't show any proof. Like me, I, I, if I, if I had something like that, I would fucking drop that verbal elbow. I'd be like, right there, right I'm there. Actually, I'd be like, look. I yeah, exactly. You, you drop it right there. You drop the evidence when you're talking about, oh, you don't have all the evidence, but I do. And then you don't post it. Drop only... it whole too. Don't fucking redact a bunch of shit we can't look at. I want to see this. I want to make sure it's legit. You know, I mean, again, send it, you know, we, we could do redactions or anything like that, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, know. but send, yeah, send it. Like I will, yeah. I will evaluate it, it. I will read it. it, prove it. Otherwise you're full of shit. Yeah. You're full of shit. This is, you're full of shit. Now I'm going to send Tug right now. Tug, check your phone. Okay. Um, I'm going to send you another thing that I forgot to put up here because I meant to, but I'm going to send it okay. to you instead. Okay. This is the only piece of evidence that I have seen so far that this woman has posted anywhere. And um, what's interesting about this is I can't tell you how I know this yet, but I can ver I have verified that it is true. That this is how manipulative or how manipulated the joke list is. She's, she's being manipulated by Lynette. So she, Lynette gives her a state of Florida Department of Children and Families piece of paper paperwork. It is dated. Oh, you can, I accidentally edited the date too far. The date 
on it is uh, September 19th. Hold on. I may have to redo that. Okay. I shouldn't have edited that, the date out. Darn it. I don't think I can go back. Anyway, you can kind of see it if you look hard. It says 9-19-2023. So it is dated September 19th, 2023. Now, basically, this is a letter clearing her of, comp of comp uh, an investigation comprised allegations of environmental hazards. This is one they posted, right? Oh, yeah. It's on Facebook. You can put it up. Okay. Yeah. Give me a minute then. I'm pulling. I, I was, I was looking at it to, you know, anything anybody sends me, I, I like, I, like we you can all, see, we, we I do just, I, I edited see the, out her picture and name, <laughs> but it was posted on September 25th. Okay. Just give me a minute. I'm, I'm sending it to myself. Okay. <laughs> It'll take me, you can talk about it. You can get yeah. Back, so, right? so basically this is a letter and I'll, I'll just read some of it for you. It says, on 9-5-2023, the Florida Department of Children and Families, DCF, received a report alleging abuse and neglect of Preston Redacted, so the child she currently has. In accordance with S-39-301 Florida statutes, DCF investigated that report and is legally required to determine whether the actions reported have met a legal threshold of preponderance of evidence to verify maltreatment and to determine the person responsible for that maltreatment if abuse or neglect is determined. We are writing to inform you that the recent child protective investigation involving your children has been completed. We thank you for your patience and cooperation with this matter. The report and investigation comprised allegations of environmental hazards. Here at the is. conclusion, yep, at the conclusion of the investigation, based on the results of interviews and information obtained, the department determined that the allegations of environmental hazards are no indicator for, so not indicated for the child. Although the investigation is completed, the case will remain open for the following uh, protective interventions and supervision. And that's not checked. Right. Uh, voluntary prevention services also not checked. And then it says if no prevention or other services are indicated. So if there are no check marks, your investigation and case will be closed with no further action or intervention at this time by the department or community based provider. Again, we appreciate your cooperation. If you have any questions, we hope you will contact us, blah, blah, blah. Now, here, so that seems like, oh, she's been exonerated, right? There's mm. no, no problem here. There's no problem. They went out. They didn't find anything. But that is not the case because this was the last time they visited, as far as I know, as of the state. It was the last time they visited, but they had been there 12 or 13 previous times before. And all the 12 or 13 previous times before, they had specific items she had to complete because it, the case was open. Who's complaining about politics? Nobody's talking about politics. Chat, what are you talking about? Oh, because I mentioned abortion? Well, it was a, the biggest story of my life. Sorry. C calm down. I didn't tell you what to think about abortion, did I? I hate it when people say stop talking about at life is politics. I'm sorry. Well, you'll, I think you'll also, survive. No, it, it, it's even different. It's even more different than that in this stuff. Uh, so many of us disagree on a lot of things. You'll hear it's like, again, some people back certain candidates. I, I go on with um, D-Day Cobra, for example. D-Day Cobra and I would not agree on politics whatsoever. But that doesn't matter, you know, when you're talking about like what what they go into or if it comes up with a story or something again you know it's i, I practice a live and let live i don't i don't give a fuck what someone else talks about. right i don't care either i mean i didn't tell anybody what my actual position is on it like it i'm just telling you that's what the story was anyway apparently it was just some people in chat talking politics between each other so i, I always jump to conclusions if people are saying stop oh. talking politics because they get really oh they were telling them not to talk politics yeah they were telling I mean, them not to talk politics yeah if i get ranting about politics you know life life is complicated most of us agree yeah. on almost everything. We almost agree on everything. It's just these these small dividers there that convince people we're worlds apart, and, and we're not. We're you not. Know, the people, who, yeah, the people who sell us that shit, they benefit from uh, dividing us that way. So if we yeah, can ever get past people. that, yeah, if all we get past politicians. that, we focus on stuff like this. We focus even if we we want to get in people that are different too. Because here's the problem: this, I, I learned this from the the Depp case was a very good 
illustration of this. You had people from every walk of life, people that politically, they couldn't agree on how to fucking chew bubble gum. But you know what? They came together and we made enough fucking noise that they are still bitching about us. Mm-hmm. They are still complaining. That they had is to come the way to do it. That's what makes them so mad. That's why they're after you. That's why they're after people who did that. Because it didn't matter what political background you were from. It was It was this incredible coming together of everybody. And that's what we need. That's what we we have to do. We we have to become we have to become a force that is greater than these than the government that is stepping on our necks. Those people are stepping on your neck. They're violating your rights. They're violating Jeremy's rights. They're violating the rights of innocent parents when they come in and they take their kids from people who whose kid has an underlying medical disorder. Th- these are the people we need to be fighting against. All of us, no matter who you vote for, I don't give a shit who you vote for. I don't care. I don't care. There's nothing about me that cares. I want Americans to be friends again. I want you to be able to go to the voting booth, vote for whoever the hell you want. Don't even tell me about it. I don't need to know. And then come to the bar and hang out with me and have a drink. And like, I voted for the other guy. So what? So they're all the same guy, by the way. They're all the exact same. They're all fucking us one way or the other. And if you haven't seen that yet, I don't know what's wrong with you. I need a drink. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, that's why That's why I usually don't rant about politics because I get on, you know, from, from the mental health side of it, when we get on the subject of mental health, it doesn't matter if they, you know, I hear sometimes, well, you know, X or Y gave money, but it doesn't hit us at the ground level. We never see it. It goes to all these oversight committees and this other shit. And more and more of your community mental health shuts down, shuts down. No crisis supports in most of our uh, cities. You can't get anything done. And you see all of these tragedies that happen that I'm not going to say they would be overcome by that, but hey, at least it would be a stopgap for some of it. Well, Anyway, <laughs> I gotta we've get got criminals, you know, in charge. So well, there's nothing. No, I mean, it, it's, it's worth a, one thing on that. Okay. They're all like enriching Atlanta. themselves. But Atlanta, for example. Okay. Oh. Atlanta. Is, Fanny Willis. Is, is she in Atlanta? Um, I can't remember. I think she is. <laughs> well, Atlanta, the they have no crisis support anymore. Like if you're, say you start hearing voices and they tell you to do something terrible, the place that's going to get you mental health treatment is the prison system. In fact, they mm. are the largest provider of mental health to the point that they don't have people that run prisons in charge anymore. They have people with mental health backgrounds that run prisons now. That's a tragedy. Wow. That that's horrible, and that's it that is horrible. Yeah, this anyway, is what happens I'm, though when you get rid of the mental oh, hospitals. I've got a. I'm hungry. I got a little one. Oh, here me we a, go. You got me a lunchable. Hey. I'm hungry. You're hungry. Aww. Yeah. I like lunchables. You, you know. like lunchables? Okay. Well, but I like the cheese, not the pepperoni. <laughs> you don't like the pepperoni? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to open this thing. I can, I, can, I can see why you couldn't open it. I can barely <laughs> open this thing. Child proof. It's dad proof too. Good lord. Child proof is dad proof. You're gonna eat that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Child proof is dad proof. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, uh, okay, you gonna put it together yourself? Here you go. Um, I want to do it because I'm a kid. Yeah, you can do it. You can put them together. Look, you take this and you sprinkle the cheese on it, mm-hmm, like that. You want to do it? Um, a little ketchup. That's not ketchup. That's the sauce on it. Yeah, I'll put some there too. I could mute for this, but I'm not going to because it's a, always a welcome change. I, I notice she pops right. up when I need a change on stuff sometimes, you know. That's cute. <laughs> don't cut your finger. Don't cut my finger. Uh, yeah, that's good. I went my nail. Hmm? I went my nail. Oh, you did? Oh, no. Here you it, go. It doesn't hurt though. Oh, that's good. You ripped your nail? You rip it off? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no, she didn't. She just, she just says she did. <laughs> okay. It was like, that sounds. She, ta- she tapped painful. it on, a, on the edge of something. I really need soft. more Oh, well, look, I'm going to push it together like that. And then look, you can sprinkle the cheese on it. So here, you put on uh, however much you want. Here, take it with you. Here, take it all with you. I can't. You do it. I don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> she won't touch anything that's messy. She's like, oh, you do it. I'm not touching it. <laughs> no. My oldest used to scream like when her hands got sticky. Sticky. Uh, sticky. Why sticky. Have right here. Okay. Here, you want to you want to put the cheese on it yourself? No. You want me to put the cheese on it too? Yeah. Uh, okay, I will. I'm glad you brought this to me so I could put my get it all over me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you think it's oh, funny? Yeah, because I'm laughing. I love laughing. You love laughing. Oh, uh, I love, love laughing too. I love laughing when you do the cheese. You do love laughing when I do the cheese? Okay, there. That's perfect now. 
Here, oh. take it with you. Um, I can't. You have to. You put want to put it together? Yeah. Okay, like a little sandwich. All right, here you go. <laughs> little sandwich. All right, take Thank it with you. you. Yep, you're welcome. I'll it make sounds- another one. Hey, I'll make another one. You take that one with you, and I'll make. I'll I'll get this one ready. Okay. So when you finish that one, come back. Okay. Yes, okay. All right. Okay. Love you. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> she was nodding at me. I was like, "No, nah, that ain't gonna cut it." I made you a sandwich. You just tell me. <laughs> okay, she's out. All right. So the reason why I say that this is manipulative is because this is just one letter. There have been many others, and the others. And, you know, this is, again, it's confidential how I have this, but I have it. I've confirmed it. So I know that 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 is true. Um, that there were 12 to 13 other communications that laid out specific items because she did not pass their inspection. And there were things that needed to be done. And this was just the last one after all of those. Now, where are the other 12 or 13? How come she didn't give it to this so-called uh, that's advocacy a good, journalist? Yep, yeah, that's a good, that's a that's a that's a good question there. So it, it's manipulative. Is yeah, where's saying. where's it's, all the yeah where are all the problems that needed to be fixed? Where's all the references to all of that? Uh huh. Yep. Exactly. Well, all of it is. It's so manipulative anyway. You know, and again, like you said, the problem. <laughs> The problem starts with the label again, an, an advocacy journalist. I mean, right there, right off the top. Again, they're telling you she calls her a victim, and she says she advocates for victims. So again, it's in the wording, right from go. It's uh, more listen and believe bullshit. But you notice, listen and believe that kind of stuff. It's so selective. Don't listen to the kids that were involved. Don't listen to the family members. Don't listen to your own eyes. You know, don't look at what you see, what you, what you hear there. Don't look at the videos or any of that stuff. Just selectively listen. Yep. And that's exactly what this is. This is selective, giving her selective information to keep going with this narrative that she's never done anything or has not had any problems with CPS. And it'll come out. It's going to come out eventually. Um, You know, um, remember that the deposition was seven hours long. There's, there are things that will come out from that deposition that will contradict everything. Like all these things that Lynette has put out publicly. I I got a list of songs from DJ Raddatz, by the way. He sent, you know, we were talking about that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's sitting, oh, man, he's got one, two, three, four, five. He he labeled one his personal favorite. I want to pull that one up. I'm going to pull that up real quick. Okay. I want to hear it. (laughs) I want to hear a song. Uh, I do have a... I think uh, in in uh, live streams, my shiny squirrel syndrome comes through. You can actually see it. I'll be like, "Yeah, look at this doc. Ooh, a song." <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. You ready for this? Yeah. All right. I don't. I don't know how loud this will come on, so I'll give you a three. <laughs> I'm telling everybody three, two, and a <laughs> one. You know, I always try to protect your hearing a little bit. You know, but here we go. Warning the following lyrics are not suitable for children. Robert Beatty called when he got the word. And he said, I suppose you've heard about Shara. So I rushed to the window and I looked outside, and I could hardly believe my eyes. As a police car rode up into Shara's drive. Oh, I know why she's leaving and where she's going to go. I guess she got busted, and the world just wants to know. Because for 24 years, I've been living next door to Shara. Shara, who the fuck is Shara? I'm the town bicycle. Everyone gets a ride. 24 <laughs> 
<laughs> to tell her how I feel and maybe get a little ass. Now I gotta get used to not being next door to Shara. Shara, who the fuck is Shara? I'm the town bicycle. Everyone gets a ride. Can my punishment be a sexual whipping? <sighs> what? <That's cool>. Oh. <sighs> oh. 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 Shara. Shara, oh. who the fuck is Shara? I'm the town bicycle. Everyone gets a ride. Can we use my fluffy handcuffs? I like it rough. What, what's that Wait, sound? What, what's that what? sound thing from? I have no idea. Uh, I, I'm, look, I feel like DJ, I'm missing a joke here. I feel like I'm missing the joke too. Uh, DJ Radis, did you? Is this? Did you take this from a post of hers? Like these are yeah. her actual words. I, I'm going to need to know this. <laughs> I need to know because I don't know who she is at all. Like I've never. Uh, this is like like uh, my first. Um, my first <laughs> seeing any post or anything is that one, you know, and then like his who the fuck is Shara? I was like, Yeah, that's how I kind of feel, but I don't understand the rest. Of it. I don't understand this. Where did it come from? Uh, tell us, tell us in the chat, please tell us because I don't get it. I don't, I'm not, I don't understand. I'm, not, I'm not understanding it. Oh, no, uh, did she? I have a feeling that, like he took the word, like something she posted, but because yeah, it says from that. her words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Featuring but lyrics by her. That's now I'm I gonna, understand. I'm gonna need the the post because that sounds like a hilarious. I think post I'll put together. There's like five or six of them, so I need a little background to understand some of these. And if they are, then this would See, make this it is how, funny live stream. This is how weird these people are. Todd. Yeah, th this is this how is, it works. When this I is, told you there was a rabbit hole that this stuff goes down, like. <laughs> So here's something else I found out about her is that she is a recording artist. And apparently some of the things she has offered to do for families going through these CPS problems is to write and record a song for them. That's a fundraiser. Now I listened to a couple of her songs on Spotify and that's really what we should play. Because they are hilarious, hilariously bad. It's oh, always baby. the oh yeah, it's always these people. I, Laura Owens is a better singer than this woman. We need Laura, to we, we need to put it all together and do a live stream on it. That's what it needs to be like. A, I you know it's oh god it's that means thing. I have to I have to dig into her. Yeah, her but you know you page. can pull it. Yeah. Oh god. It'll also, uh, I'll just it's have to say. It's going to make me lose IQ uh, points. Yeah, that, that live stream will come down too. Unfortunately, it'll have to go to another, you know, thing because, you know, they'll flag them. <laughs> you know, they will. You know, they'll be like, oh my God, my music is so great. <laughs> you know? and really what they mean is, you know, I mean, it, I wanted to make money for me, but only three people listened before those awful monsters played it. <laughs> I'm being harassed and defamed. Yeah, I'm being harassed by people playing my music. <laughs> I'm being harassed because people are laughing at my bad voice. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know that. That's why I make AI music because I can't sing worth a damn and I know it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not deluded enough to think that I can't. Oh. And I mean, I don't have anything against people who want to sing and it brings them happiness. Um, that's great. Sing all you want. Sing all the time. But like when you start pretending like you're you're um uh, you know a recording artist that people would actually pay money for so you're going to do it as a fundraiser and then it's unlistenable that's just it's just another one of these things that points to the non-credible nature of what she's doing it's not credible that anyone would pay money <laughs> to hear that I'm sorry, but it's just not credible. I've got a, I got a visitor. I was giving her food real quick. Here, take that. She brought a guitar with her. <laughs> like, a, of course she did. Huh? What? I guarantee you, know? you that Bugs' music is better than, you know, than the joke list. Uh, uh, fine, sing me a song. Daddy me, I go Yeah, that's it. Daddy yeah. me, you're gonna have a what? A good day. Oh, we're going to go on a field trip. Daddy and me, you're going on a field trip today. That's oh, it's right. perfect. I love it. All right, thank you. I want, I not, I don't want the box. Oh, okay. Well, here, take, you just want this? Yeah. 
There's one without a top. They only give you three, like at least pizza things. And she's like, the other, it doesn't have a top. I'm like, it's kind of, it's supposed to be a little pizza. There you go. All right, take it. Got it. I don't get the all the sauce on you. Y'all don't get the sauce on you. <laughs> That's why you keep it in this thing. Here, put it in this. It's like a plate. Okay, yeah. She's like, I don't want to touch that thing. I was like, well, it's like a plate. Take it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I think I'll hit super chats. You want to see if, let's see if there's, there's got to be some for you in here. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not you. Not you. I'm sure there will be some for you tomorrow when we'll, we'll take some, I'll give you some money tomorrow and you can buy a toy or 10. Okay. Yes, of course, we're going to get bubble gum for the money. Yes, that is the overriding. I've heard 15 times, we're going to get bubble gum, aren't we? I was like, yeah, we. That, that's what you want out of all tomorrow. We can do anything. Don't get you gum. love how they have those simple requests that make them so happy? It's like I a love stick that. of bubble gum. I, I wish I could go back to that time and be like, right? bubble gum, that's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Soma, thank you for the month there. Appreciate that. Still loving the fact that Tug does live streams around the same time as my first work break. So I'll be uh, easy to able able to tune in and get the tea. Indeed. I think this has been a good one. I think this is, I get the feeling this might just be starting. You might have some more to this one. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to get some more responses. Uh, Renee, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Thank you. Love those. Fallen Hero, thank you for the gifted membership as well. Thank you. Captain Kern, thanks for the two there. Since Larry isn't streaming, here is his super chat. That's awesome. By the way, Larry is going to be streaming after this. Thank you for his super chat. <laughs> Make sure that you tell him you gave it to me. <laughs> 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 yeah make sure we'll get that to larry no problem don't worry it'll happen yeah yeah just like he yeah he didn't he totally didn't like uh simul stream you and <laughs> it was totally <laughs> uh, that that is some of the funniest I, I was like that's amazing that's great that was good times good times yeah theresa thank you for the gifted membership appreciate that Puzzled Puzzler. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, two there. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Is that like, here comes the Brian? Here comes the judge. <laughs> I think that was a skit uh, in a 70s show. I can't remember oh. what it was. Saturday Night Live, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Thanks for the 10. Megan, will you be addressing the joke list, <laughs> the fake journalist? She wants you off this story and she's all upset. Yeah, and she's upset because... I'm a real journalist and I'm not agreeing with her. I'm, I've looked at the evidence and I don't agree with her and it's making her look bad and she doesn't like it. And I'm real sorry about that, but I'm not going to quit. So you can, can, you can continue all the baloney and the, and the, the, the tantrums and whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, you're somebody who should have stayed with, I don't know. I don't know what you did before this, but you should go back to doing that. You can continue to have tantrums. I will definitely monetize you. I, <laughs> I, I tell everybody that. I will Send monetize the more. shit out of you. I will monetize you until the fucking cows come home. I will. Keep tagging me on Facebook so people can send it to me because I don't go there and I won't see it. <laughs> yes. If people are mentioning me and complaining about me, you can always send it. People do, by the way. I'm sure they send you anything on yourself. But yes, it is always appreciated. <laughs> Somebody sent me uh, the one, you know, this one and... I know you you got it as well. So I was like, well, that's cool. But I was glad they sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, thanks for the five. Check the news in Gainesville. They're reporting that the entire board, Ezel's wife, was on resigned because they aren't qualified. I knew there were a couple of them that resigned, but it's possible that more did. Um, let me see if there's more news on that. I know that she was kicked off. She resigned. What yeah, kind of they board? got sued. It's a, it's an electric, a Gainesville electric um, oh. company, and DeSantis appointed all these people. Oh, yeah, they did. They all resigned. Holy oh, crap. No. Oh, my oh. God. Look, I'm sharing it. GRU authority all board right, members all resigned due to lawsuit challenging their appointments. All four members of the Gainesville Regional Authorities Board are resigning just months after Governor Ron DeSantis appointed the board. They fell like dominoes after Tara Ezel resigned. Yep. So they got sued because um, 
the residents were basically saying none of these people are residents and they live in a different neighborhood than they're supposed to, or they're unqualified in some other way. And so they all resigned. It's a real, it's a real, you know, Ron DeSantis has some real problems with his appointments, including he appointed judge to Thomas's and he's got problems. I'd like to know who the hell is. Um, it's because so many of these people are um, appointed for, let's just say all the wrong reasons, you know? Yeah. I'd like to know who's in charge of giving him advice on that. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to, did I share that with you or did I share it in the wrong screen? Did I share that? Did you see it? Yeah, I did. I shared it on the screen. Oh, you did? Okay, I was on a different page, so I didn't know yeah, yeah, if you'd seen it, it or not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at it. Yeah. Right. I just I realized sure. that I had my live stream, stream yard from earlier today open and I went, <laughs> and I went to the wrong, the wrong. Yeah, I went to the wrong. And then I was like, why aren't I on the screen? What is happening? And I'm like, wait, this isn't my, <laughs> this is the old stream. This is not, this is just, I have the window open. That's all. Okay. Anyway, moving on. I've always, I left one open one time and you could hear me like I have a TV across there. You could hear me like get up and I was like, oh man. So I, you could hear me open a, a Coke and turn on like a, <laughs> I think it was Dexter or something. <laughs> Start watching TV for a while. <laughs> no, mine wasn't still going. Uh, it was I just going is what I'm saying. No, yeah. it was and it ended. It was just still up on the screen <laughs> yeah. as if like in its, you know, when it ends, you know, if you leave the stream yard yeah, yeah. window it open, it'll stay there. That's yeah. what was happening. So I was like, that's why I got I, all like, these days, though, I, I um, unplug my microphone every time just in case oh, I leave a live mic. At least you don't have a camera. Yeah, well, that's why I don't have a camera. Actually, the kids are why I don't have a camera because they'll come in and if they sit down, they mess with stuff and, you know, God knows what would happen. I'd be sitting here without a shirt on or something. You'd be like, oh my <laughs> God, no. Oh, <laughs> Shane Cook, thank you for the gifted membership. Thank you for that. Appreciate you. Mad Dog, what's up? Thanks for them. I wish the jokalist, uh, Sean, would understand that. What, that they're a jokalist? <laughs> <laughs> Joan Feather, thanks for the uh, super chat there. Her supporters are saying what they said was a, uh, is that supposed to be a lie? Uh, Her supporters are saying what they said. There's a lie. Are they talking about? Um, you saying what the they oh said in her supporters are saying that what the girls said yeah, were they're... lies, but I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that at all. I mean, it, it's, it's like, the reason I went to that 2019 uh, anime convention wasn't because other people were going to be there. It was because the person I was covering had been talking about Vic Mignogna. He would be there and I would see the way that he acts because I tell you, predatory people, they can't hide the fact that they have involuntary gifts. I mean, it's just like anybody. And it's disgusting when you see it. You can tell. And that one, you know, I, I, what I saw there was a, a guy that had been told that despite, uh, Despite people saying, oh, hugs are bad, you know, oh, you give somebody, somebody tells you a horrible story and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I got to comfort them. He had a he had a person that was sitting with him that was saying, no, no, you can't you, you can't give a person a hug. Well, this this one woman came up. She told me like, it was heart wrenching. I listened to this. I was heart wrenching. And he was he looked over that guy and he was like, if I if, if I can't give her a hug, if I'm going to get sued with that, damn it, I'm going to do it anyway. Right. And. And I was like, yeah, that's that that's it. Jim, thanks for the two there. Calling it a whamulance, indeed. And also, Jim, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your membership. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. I've said that so many times I can say it automatically. That's amazing. Uh Janice, thanks for the uh 10 there. Sharp was admitted. Ish admitted ish. Uh, by a judge oh admonished. admonished yeah that's it okay sorry if, if there's a typo i just I, I try to figure out what you're saying there so it might take me a second there um admonished by a judge for releasing hipaa protected, protected info for... during the no well i'll tell i'll say this about that i won't criticize her for doing that some of these cases i don't know about that case i don't know what was going on but in a lot of these cases, you do have to make a decision. Am I going to release medical information that is by its nature protected that 
you know, bolsters the story here that the parents are telling or don't I? And I always opt with, yeah, I'm going to, especially if I have the permission of the parent, right? Because the parent can give you HIPAA protected information. Now, a judge doesn't like that. A judge doesn't like it because the judge will, he gets upset that people are reporting on this case that he wants sealed and he doesn't want anyone to know about. So I side with the parents on that one every time. So I don't know, though, in this case, what the problem was. Yeah, yeah right. Only medical weird. professionals are held to HIPAA. If you are the patient or your child is the patient, you have the right to yep. waive HIPAA. So that to me, that's not a problem. Yeah, a lot of people misunderstand HIPAA. And, and again, you know, that, that ain't judges. They, they rule on a totally different thing. They're saying this information. I, I didn't want anyone talking about this case, period, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. See, Nika, thanks for the 10 there. The hells need my attorney, Phil Ellison. I don't know. Who, I don't know who that is. I have to look them up. Oh, Phil <laughs> Ellison. Uh, Phil, I think I, I think I recognize that name, but I yeah. don't know. I don't yeah, know. I think I do. I think he might write for, um, what was his name? Phil Ellison? Yeah, let me pull that up again. I think. Could be wrong. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, it's chair, not the one I thought it was. This chair I have is so bad. One day you're gonna hear it, like you can hear it creak and stuff. One day you're gonna hear me like fall out of it. The, when uh, during the depth trial, the arm fell off of it, and almost fell out of my chair. One day I was <laughs> leaning on it. it was like <laughs> that literally happened to me on a live stream that my armrest went out uh -huh. from under my arm because a like a bolt fell out of my chair on a live stream. It was funny. Yeah, it just sounded like my entire, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see what's going on. It sounded like I was being attacked by someone. Or <laughs> like, oh my God, the kids are rebelling. It's a, it's a coup. Yeah, <laughs> Dream Angel Core, thank you for the super sticker there. Appreciate that. Let's see the wildlife. Thanks for the vibe. A journalist professor taught us, if your mom <laughs> tells you she loves you, check it out. <laughs> <And those gals, laughs> that's for agendas. <laughs> uh -huh. That's actually, uh, hey, I like that, you know, check everything, you know, <laughs> look at your sources, you know, and look for a complete story. That's why I like, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. Like I'll, some of the names that'll talk to you too, or it's wild when you open it up. Like, like people have no idea if, if, if you're an unlikable person, people around them will talk. I mean, just anything. It's amazing who will contact, especially if you have somebody that will keep their mouth shut about who contacts. Nice. Thanks for the 10 there. The Jokeless hates any female smarter than her, which is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it really hates them if they're wearing Prada. So she doesn't like pro people wearing Prada, huh? She's not a nice person. Don't feel sorry for her. You are not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear Prada. I can't. Uh, I can't lie. I don't wear Prada. I. I. I think spending that kind of of money on designer wear is dumb, and you'll never see me in it. Never. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I make millions of dollars. I will not buy a three hundred dollar t shirt. That is the grossest waste of money I have ever heard of in my life. I just wear what I like and none of it has anything to do with that. You know, like I said, I like Hawaiian shirts <laughs> some of our button up shirts. Some of them I like good color. fabric. So I do yeah. like more expensive fabric. I like expensive cotton, but I mean, something that will last just because it has a name tag on it though. Yeah. I will not pay more for some name. I will I was, pay more for better fabric, but not for a name. Well, some of the wait list, I was watching, um, one of those expensive watch channels and they were talking about women's, they had all these designer wear and they were talking about, I think it was Hermes purses. And they were like, yeah, to get one of these, you have to buy all these little knickknack things. And then they'll, they, they kind of put you on a waiting list and one day they'll contact you and they'll sell you a purse, but you don't get to pick out which purse you want. <laughs> I was like, what? fuck all that. Yeah. How about the Birkin bags? There are Bir this Birkin bag that everyone talks about is like a, I don't know. It's like a $250,000 bag and it's ugly as hell. It's just a big leather bag. Y you could go to coach and get a nice coach bag, you know, for way less than that. That's probably a nicer looking bag. 
I, I just don't get it. I don't get this name brand stuff. I never have. I've never understood it. Yeah, well, it's just people flexing what they own, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, really. SF, thanks for the five there. Great stream. Can you give uh, this super chat to Megan and ask her <laughs> pass along to Larry? <laughs> Larry <laughs> Please I. send your super chats for Larry right here. He's actually going to stream after this, so you can yeah. but send all the super I've chats. i got my redirect to to on it, too. So yeah. that's what... Send all the super chats for Larry right now here in Tug's chat, and we'll make sure that he gets yeah, it. Yeah, we totally will. Totally. We will totally make sure he totally gets it. Will. Accepting like, all Larry's super chats right now. <laughs> 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 if you hear me, if you hear me scream, I'm rich with a big one or something, you know. That I meant Larry's rich. That's what I was saying. Larry's rich. <laughs> Candace, thanks for the five there. Lynette's supporters are saying the doctor lost her life. False. Yeah, that that was something that Megan looked into. Yeah, we we already uh, confirmed yep. that she is practicing right now in the state of it's either Virginia or West Virginia, <clears throat> but she has been contacted by phone. She's in good standing at the hospital where she works. Uh, that is a lie. Yep. So there's a oopsie, and then they said that Ashley later went to the courtroom and stated she lied again. They gave no proof, you know. And like we said, I don't I don't want to say an if then. There, there are multiple situations where if that happened then, and I don't want to get into those, but it still doesn't explain what we showed there because that was not a report by Ashley. Yeah, I don't even want to have this conversation until someone hands me a document. Yep. Give, give me the documents. My inbox is open to all of you. Tug's inbox is open. Send if them you, over. If you are claiming, that if you have this information, then there's no excuse for hanging on to it. Send me the unredacted information so I can look at it. But so far, I have, I've have seen jack shit. Do not redact things like the case number or anything because it, it, no. will, it will be put to scrutiny. Like you, mm -hmm. you fake that. Oh, my God. All of it will tear you apart for that. I've had that happen before. And I've. Oh, you know, I've wrecked somebody for that because they. Yeah, they, if you they, redact they, anything, that it, it's not valid. Like I will redact what I need to redact to put it out there. Like yeah. I will always redact people's addresses. I will redact yeah. sensitive information, children's names, whatever. But yeah, prove it. Prove it. Suzanne, thank you for the gifted membership. Appreciate that. Thank you. Laura, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership. Welcome to Tug Sucks. Thank you. Bad duck. What's a bad duck? Thanks for the five there. I highly suggest going to what the hell's and, and adding the oh I and the Otter Creek playlist. Start at the beginning, you'll understand everything. Just go in order. Yeah, actually, you know, I've been working through quite a bit of that. I've been going through what people pull up first of all as suggestions. That was my um, my intro and then i started through the uh the playlist because that was suggested uh, maybe you suggested it actually in one of the uh one of the streams but yeah actually that's that's very good suggestion for people um there's a lot too and it you know like for people that are this many months behind on that it does take a while to catch up that many videos as well lisa thanks for the two there no dv found in background checks about LP or JC. Yeah, but here's the thing: if if you only ch if you only checked that name, yeah, you what, don't what know else what's is... really that she she has 21 aliases. Yeah, that show, and you know, other people are saying she has 39 aliases, but on that specific, you know, <laughs> one check, it was 21 aliases, and we're all 21 yeah. check. And, and I don't believe any background checks, by the way, that don't come from police. Uh, so there's all these background check services online that you can pay for. Oh, those are like Truth Finder or whatever, and they they serve a purpose. You can sometimes find, um, you know, mortgage information, asset information, that sort of thing. But you are not going to find a really accurate police report unless you have canvassed all the police stations where this person was known to have been. And under all the aliases she's known to have used and gotten those through FOIA requests from police. So I'm just saying you can do all the online background checks you want and you still will not find what I find when I go looking. Yeah. And 
I mean, th there's certain things that won't show up either. You know, like we were talking about how many people have been accused. You don't, you have no idea. There's no, there's right. nothing that's going to keep that nothing at all. I mean, if she was involved in specific cases too, if she's accusing people of, uh, you know, that with kids, then many of those will be sealed. So Ooh, if they go just, to trial. Actually, there might be something about that. I just had an idea of how to find that. Because if she did accuse anybody of a crime, she may have gone to police about it. So they oh, might yeah, have records. A record of it. Yeah. yeah, there could be a record of a complaint, even if the complaint never went anywhere. But it depends on the state on whether or not they will actually give it to you. Because if it wasn't prosecuted, sometimes the state laws say they seal those. Right. So and that depends. makes sense. That, and that makes sense, too, you know, because, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just basically uh, maligning some some poor person out there. Right. Kilobyte, thanks for the 20 there. Please look at what the hell's Otter Creek list. August 14th, 2023. Corrupt investigator can't stop lying. She is stalking the hells. So that's the joke list stalking the hells to interview him until he uh, takes her up on it and posts it. The lady is batshit crazy. <laughs> I want to watch it. All right, we got to watch that. Yes. I'm going to pull that and watch it, you know. I'm telling you, we need to put together a, a jokeless live stream. Just just <laughs> one to really, you know, we were like. Ugh. Well, my She's, only concern about that is giving her more, like, followers. I hate oh, that idea. It's not. I mean, uh, you know, if Jer I, I, I get what Jeremy's like, I, I don't want to. Because, dude, I'll sit here and trade internet blows with anybody <laughs> if I'm in the mood. I don't give a fuck like well that's the, what... the problem is the problem is though is that if if she's one of these people that because hey, i know she's connected to some of these people who preys on on families and gets them you know to use their so-called services the last thing you want is for her to have that's more how you name expose it too. i mean if true you're doing this as groups most people have never even true. heard of that you know what i mean i know so... but i find such a i have I've, I've tried and there was a guy at the uh the, the daily beast who did really actually somewhat good reporting some of it was really bad in the absurd case but some of it was really good in exposing them mm -hmm. and he did some and we could pull that up and and you could see it at some time because it's really interesting because he was the only other reporter that ever found what i knew you know and i was like holy shit look he did <laughs> it it was it was will summer at the daily beast and he did some shitty reporting but also like really got into the christopher hallett situation and the like all those people the guy who got shot and like all those people who surrounded him kurt pendergrass david uh david nah, i forget his last name now i i try to put these people out of my mind because they're just so awful Yes, but anyway. um, that's one thing I hate, having a, a, a mental checklist full of just awful, awful human beings, you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah. also getting old, so I can't remember anything anymore. I have to, yes, I know. I have to write everything I'm down. Spotchy as I've gotten older. <laughs> right? Let's see, Wander Dust. There's actually three that I see. So thank you. Three gifted memberships over there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Also, Gigi Wright said, uh, thanks for the two. I've written... Um, Songs and parodies. That's where I knew. And then he said all that stuff over. <laughs> I guess I want to listen to it and see if I understand the background, all of it. So Janice, thanks for Dan May. And I'll give you uh, $50 to tell the joke is you love to wear Prada. <laughs> oh, no. I tell her for free. I, I'll be like, when I cross dress, I love to wear Prada. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would tell her. Yeah. <laughs> She'll always bring up her ex-husband's attorney who wore Prada. Ah, there we are. And was unethical during her divorce. That's funny. Yep. She hates everybody for it. There, there's an easy 50 too. You need to, you need to get you some, uh, <laughs> you need to bring in like a purse. It's like Prada or something. <laughs> you know? Oh Lord. Yeah. You get it on 45 cent wish Prada and <laughs> bring it in and get your 50. <laughs> <laughs> Janice thinks it's in. Uh, the joke list thinks she's Snow White, complete with a costume. I Us saw OGs that. call her Snow Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that picture. Snow, Snow Yellow. Yellow. Oh, it's great. It's K Rab. What's up, K Rab? How you doing, my friend? Thank you for the vibe. Uh, Megan, you should see the size of Tug's hands. He showed <laughs> them uh, when <laughs> Amber Heard complained. Uh, oh, yeah, about my rings. Yeah, or about JD's ring. She was she was saying, you know, he he hit her in the face with a ring. Right. And I wear a lot of rings. Like I 
I wear a ring almost on every, in any finger. And I was saying, you know, you see this, he has bigger rings than I do. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and yeah, man, there were a lot of rings. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Candace thinks of the 20 there. The joke list has convinced lower IQ people in or around <laughs> Otter Creek that she's a real journalist. Uh, they've done things based on her advice that will bring them negative consequences. A box of rocks is smarter. <laughs> yeah. And I bet some of that advice was like sovereign citizen based. And oh, no. uh, that's what I'm guessing based on the people she knows. And I see her on Facebook with. Um, yeah, that could be pretty entertaining. See, that's not <sighs> any of that stuff is bad advice, you know, <laughs> Typically. Yes. Oh, there's my ring picture. Yeah, here you go, man. I've got Oh, I want to see this. Yeah, here we go. We've got rings on, so there it is from the trial. There's my <laughs> holy crap. That's my tug... that's, that's my <laughs> the tug life is coming together. That's more my phone. Now. Yeah, that's which one is your know. hammer beating hand? Uh, that would be my left hand. <laughs> see that umbrella guy. See the little tattoo that when that I used tattoo. to be... when I used look to at, uh, look at this do... bling. Yeah, it's just a few. Actually, I've got better rings. <laughs> it's just what I had right there. All I guess I've been out. That yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, I got some for my grand. I don't know. I love rings. I, like I said, I'm OCD for real. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I uh, I obsessively do stuff. I obsessively like rings. So I can't have one. I have to have many. Let's see. Tracy, thanks for the five. Florida is a stand your ground state. It indeed is. It indeed is. <laughs> you know, we've seen a lot of cases that have come out of there. Kelly B, thanks for five. You two need to watch a couple of town hall meetings. I, I would do that. would be funny. Uh, one with old uh, Mayor Russ the Sus and the new mayor and the latest. Your eyes will open. Hmm. Yeah, I know there's this whole like thing going on with the the town. And, and I still have no idea because I haven't looked into that. But if I do, the Jokalist is going to get mad. <laughs> She's going to get mad because I'm going to have a different take on it than she does because I I process these things differently through a different filter than she does. Oh, no. And you might point out corruption. <laughs> I might. I might. And like she said, I'm a top shelf journalist, top shelf. So top shelf, you know, <laughs> we see things a little differently than the bottom shelf, which I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's what she's saying. I'm the top shelf and she's on the bottom shelf so there might be you know a disparity there between how we see it i think compared to her i'd be a top shelf journalist i'd, I'd be a top <laughs> shelf reporter and i've never written a fucking You've never article. written anything i get to about like halfway through a paragraph and then i'm like blah 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 I'm like, blah right blah, blah i'm going live <laughs> mickey thanks for five catching up megan you might have just a new tag my protected opinion <laughs> <laughs> you both uh oh love you both love you both and, and larry and Larry, yeah larry like i said i'm gonna redirect i actually got the redirect set up right i know it this time so paul thanks for the two. she's talking about harley not no no she's talking about the 2006 yeah, she's case. talking about the yeah in that now that document we pulled up was a different document that that's a different that was, thing but, the, which she's talking one. about yeah from current but the yeah. two thousand the one she was talking about was 2006 but she's yeah. just claiming she has these documents but not posting them which yeah. is a red flag and she's like go look them up when you know you can't <laughs> like that's not how that works <sighs> mickey thanks for the five you're giving a line at all new terms to use to make her sound smart <laughs> i don't think there's any we did <laughs> what did we say uh, i'm not sure something about hat racks probably <laughs> Let's see how long it takes her to use them. Get ready, set, go. Yeah, we'll I'm see. Put you in a hat rack. I'm gonna put you, dear umbrella man. I'm gonna put you in a hat rack. <laughs> I love that. That's that's probably my favorite. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a shirt of that. We already got a design going. You know, <laughs> McRae. Thanks for the twenty. What are we drinking? Let's get to the important issues. Oh, can you believe I did this sober? That was a bad mistake. I, I should have brought a drink. I, I, I'm, my, I'm sober. I finished, I've got kids right now. <laughs> I finished my bottle. Of, that never stopped me before. I finished my bottle of whiskey uh, the other night. And because it's not on my desk, I need to replace my desk whiskey. My desk bourbon, it needs to be replaced. So I need to walk downstairs, get a new bottle and put it on my desk so that I don't have to complain that I didn't get a drink before I streamed. 
but I haven't done that yet because I'm feeling lazy. So I'll probably have one after after the stream. Now, my way is uh, I come with a cigar after the day, you know, <laughs> smoking a little bit while I'm in here and I oh, laugh at stupid. I think if I if I were drinking, I get laughing. I never stop. I don't think I'd ever get through a <laughs> live stream with these people. <laughs> That's just corner. Thanks for five. Megan should put a button with the music from the old uh, rap song Hammer Time on a computer. No, because I would get copyrighted because that poor dude went broke. So he's probably oh, yeah. out to get every penny he can get from that. But, but I believe I am going to pull that. I will beat you with a fucking hammer. I'm going to put that on the, <laughs> on the board for sure. Uh, I got to get tug freaking out on the board. I love it. I'm going to put you right next to Nick Ricada. Uh, I've got Nick Ricada here. Get the fucking chainsaws ready. <laughs> I'm going to put you right next to that button. Uh, uh, chainsaws and hammers, huh? Chainsaws and hammers. DJ Redis, I hit that one, but I want to thank you. Oh, Appreciate good. It. He he sent you the links to the, the yeah, he sent me, source he material? Sent me five, no, no, that's where he sent me the songs. He had sent oh, me, uh, source, I want the I'm source just... material. Claire, thanks for the two. Another keyboard warrior. Ugh, indeed. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there. Uh, Claire, thanks. Uh, also, thanks for two. Can I come out from behind the sofa now, Megan? Did I scare somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That does tend to happen. I hey, get worked Jill? up. Jill thinks you're, yeah, you got, actually got worked up in the middle of it. For, for <laughs> <laughs> Who did I scream at? I blacked out there for a minute. I don't know. Uh, you were, you got a little worked up about uh, some of her claims. And um, then, no, it was the thing you got really worked up about <laughs> is uh, politics. That Oh, the politics. Yeah. I just don't like that criticism. It's You're always, like, damn you, like, politics. You <laughs> ruined my life. <laughs> it's true. Jill thinks, Jill thinks we're the 20. No state. Plenty of statement back. Thank you. Vince thinks we're uh, two. Uh, man, watching Shutter Island because of you. That's a great movie. That me. movie is so good. It mm. is so scary and freaky and it's good. I like it. I just, it, it's... <laughs> It, it's it's fascinating. I I really wish uh, mental health places would let you do something like that. <laughs> you know? Right? You have to you have to be filthy rich for them to you know to actually play you. along with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and the the other thing too I noticed about that movie was I didn't know who directed it. I didn't know it was a Scorsese movie until after it was over and the credits right. rolled, and I and I went, oh, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it, I I was riveted. You know, yeah. like I was just riveted the entire time. And I don't think I've ever seen a Scorsese movie that I wasn't riveted um, to, you know. And so that it was just funny when I saw his name on the screen. I was like, oh, that explains it. I also got two PayPal donations. I I, I give initials. I, I won't, you know, because people might have their real name up there. They usually do. So D, I'm going to say thank you for that $20 donation. There's nothing listed on there as a statement there's a area where people put in stuff and there was also a, a ten dollar one as well so thank you for those as well let's see pandora fox thank you for the two there mega box i respect you not much in common with you but respect look a grown-up how awesome yeah. thanks That's for being a grown-up i mean again you know we, we all get it like when we're up here uh, again we disagree on things sometimes, or we talk about it. Like with the documentation, we discussed whether or not to uh, to showcase some stuff, like like what that would mean and everything else. And we may disagree on some of that. You're going to have disagreements, and that's okay. That's how you figure out what the hell you're supposed to do with some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, Deborah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah, you, I mean, you have to. You have to have. You have to have adult discussions. Deborah, thanks for the two and the super sticker. Appreciate that. Jill, thanks for the two. Um, jo the jokeist is a friend of Lionette's. Indeed, indeed. She's a. Um, <laughs> you can you can tell with some of these folks. You can you can tell that they're not they're not a non biased party going in. Denise, thanks for the ten. There are a lot of uh, videos of you, or the Joke List YouTube videos, especially with Miko Hayes. Miko has a short fuse with the Joke List. The videos are hilarious <laughs> due to her being stupid. Send me a couple of those. We'll laugh. Like I said, we'll have a day. I a saw while. one. I saw one. And and like you guys think I have tech problems? You think that I'm bad with the boomer tech skills? 
it the first like 30 minutes of the I had to quit watching. I quit watching after 30 minutes of him trying to explain to her how to use a link to get onto a conference call. Oh no. I am not kidding. And she was convinced that it was a trick and that he was giving her a virus. And he was like, okay, look, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the Google. There's like a you can go to Google and put the link in and it'll tell you if it's dangerous or not. And he's got it on screen. He's like, look, it's not dangerous. I have a guest here. He's used it. If you use it, you can come on. And she's all, you lied to me. You told me that, that we were gonna do this on the phone. He's like, this is how it's done in in the, the year of our Lord 2024 yeah. or whatever it was, you know. Um this goes on for 30 minutes. It's incredible. If it's a StreamYard.com link, you know, or a Discord or whatever, depending. Like most of us use StreamYard right now. You know, you can just tell. StreamYard, it just it reads across. You can, oh, you can check them really easy. That's so dumb, though. You have to send links. We send links to everybody. <laughs> I send them to people I have no idea who they are. Like, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I've never had a reaction like that. And yeah, thanks for five. Bubblegum, yeah, bubble, <laughs> bubblegum. Um, is that um, for a song? Oh, yeah, good deal. Yeah, I she actually she wants that. She wants that bubblegum. <laughs> like I said, she I did anything. I was like, you can get that 20. is a good deal. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I was like, you can get two packs more. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate that. Britt. Thank you for the five gifted memberships. Thank you. I love watching those fall in. So I love it. Wolf Connor, thanks for two. Hey, it took. Here comes the judge. 1960s. Laughing. That's where that comes from. So oh, yeah, laughing. Laughing. Okay. I'll check that out. Suzette, thank you for the $5 super sticker. Appreciate that. Rhea Ra, thanks for the two. Hat rack on. Water is 210 likes. I wonder where that's at now. I, oh, God. It's probably in the thousands. Oh, my God. I wonder for real. Let me, I, I got to look real fast. <laughs> I, no, I figure it's a, uh, oh, Jesus. This thing never, Twitter hates me these days. I think it's probably in the, the couple, it's probably in the, I'm going to guess time was 190 to 200. Let me, let me find it. Uh, Wrong one. Oh, there it is. Okay. 222. Actually, it's higher than I thought. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Her three. Good. Yeah. Fallen Hero, thank you for the gifted membership. Appreciate that. Brett, thank you for the 20 there. No statement attached, but plenty of statement backing. Thank you. Liz, thank you for the five uh the five gifted memberships. <laughs> My brain. Thank you, Liz. Good to see you, by the way. Here, Marie, thanks you for the five there. On a scale of one to ten, how corrupt is Levy County on a legal front and politically? I can't answer the political one, but on the legal front, I'm giving it an like a 7.5. Yeah. I was and that's eight. just on what I found now. <laughs> yeah, that's so far. So that's yeah. so far. Now it, that 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 number could change. And it, but I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and I'm gonna give it a seven and a half right now i give it an eight i'll give it a little room to go up you know <laughs> yeah we do need to give it some room to go up because yes, i have a feeling that the that the well is deep if you know what i mean <laughs> indeed k rap thanks for five bubble gum solves all the problems in the world when you're four <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is very that's so true liz thanks for the 20 months i love to tug and megan you both rock oh Thank thanks liz Kicking with it. Yaya, yeah. thanks for the five there. Yeah. This was uh, running her mouth on what the hell's Facebook today about that. Oh, Marla, my bad. I said Maria. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my Southern coming out. Maria, Marla, that's all the same name. Yeah, there. <laughs> I'm sure there's I'm sure there's people over there. I haven't looked at the Facebook um, like recently. You know, I, I did a lot of screenshots going back, but I need to keep up with it at least by daily i figure if there's something really crazy people will send it to me though steph thank you for the three dollar super sticker appreciate that so thanks for the two can you ask megan to read larry's super chats again <laughs> <laughs> you know what when you guys go over to redirect to larry later ask him if he wants me to come on and read his super chats for him for free because apparently that 
is what I'm good for. So yeah, ask him. Maybe I should give up the rest of my evening so I can read Larry's super chance. <laughs> or you should just go redirect you know teddy thanks for the team what name did you use are you talking about uh looking the, the current one that is being used so what you know the the others yeah there needs all of those need to be but all of those you know? have to be checked do you know how long that's going to take like that yeah it's a lot this long. is actually this is something that if i had unlimited funds um, if I were Jeremy and I had unlimited funds, which he doesn't have, and right. he's already 150 in, but if let's say for the sake of argument, he was Elon Musk, I would hire a private eye to find, to run down every single alias in every single city and talk to every single neighbor, every, yeah. every, that's what, I, that's how I would do this. And that's what it would, it's going to take. D does anybody involved in this have that kind of budget? No. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> but that's what it, that's what it needs. That's what it needs. This is not something that, I mean, I would be lucky to find something doing with the, you know, limited resources I have, but what it really needs is a former cop who knows how to do this. Um, you know, so if, if any of you are former policemen who want to moonlight on the side as a PI and go do this, uh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Let, yeah. hit me up we'll work together just for the shits and giggles you know because otherwise it's going to cost a ton of money yep james thanks for the three there sucks to be larry <laughs> uh no so connie thanks for the two to see larry and drag <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thanks for the tug. Did you see my post? I tagged you in. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, here's the thing: when people ask that, and I, I, I don't mean anything rude by this. When I get it, the tags through the, um, my my Twitter mm -hmm. has gotten big enough. I think it's up to a, like 152,000 followers. So some days, if there's a lot of stuff going on, if I don't notice it right away, then it gets buried. You know, because you you get mm -hmm. tagged into everything like there's a that's how my email is if i don't respond yeah. to it right away if i if you ever email me and i don't respond right away i lost it but i try it, too much time went by so always try again <laughs> yeah i try though i mean you can uh dm me dms are weird right now though with twitter too sometimes dms don't come through for days <laughs> they were just so weird i've dm'd you sometimes and you're like i didn't see that for three days i'm like that's yeah so i just like i like what the heck you know did you message me this and it'll be something like i i you know that i would definitely be like oh my god i would respond to and then it comes through three days i'm like oh my god and then i look at the day I'm like what the hell it came through three days ago <laughs> Sierra, <laughs> thanks for the five there. I can't find Lynette's uh, a position on what the hell's page. Can anyone help? Uh, what is it called? She's going to jail. Is that the the one? That's where we watch that. That's the one with the deposition. Yeah. 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 It's called She's Going to Jail. It's not every piece of There's a lot more, but. No, there's again, seven hours, yeah, but that, can't that's not yet. been released. He just put up a couple of clips. Yeah. Are there videos of each court date? in full out there actually yeah I, so i have posted uh hearing number one parts one and two totally uninterrupted by any commentary on my channel i have also posted part um the hearing number two on my channel i'm going to post three four and five when i figure out how to because those three for some reason are in a different video format so i'm going to have to in order to get them on youtube i have to convert them to an mp4 uh so I maybe I, I need to get IT goatee Brad to help me with that. But yes, there are plans to have them uploaded in full. And there are hearing one and two on my channel right now. I'm gonna go videos. through all of them probably next week. I've been waiting for everybody to clear. Let, you know, there's so many people that were covering the beginning. I just mm -hmm. I wanted to get in later. You know, I wanted to see other people's opinions on it. And then mm -hmm. and th that's what happened with that fish and wildlife thing. I saw so much in it because I saw other people talk about it first. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that helped. Dan Davis, thanks for two. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he kind of. So is Michael Jordan. <laughs> yep. Fat Yoda. <laughs> Fat Yoga. He's Fat, Fat Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> don't talk about legal vices dog like that uh, that's although he is fat 
Yoda is. I'm telling you, I can I can misread anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the membership. Welcome to Tux Tux. Denise. Thank you for the uh, super chat there. Someone said the hat rack wears Prada. <laughs> the <laughs> hat rack. <laughs> uh, Carol, thank you for the 10 there. Candy money for the kids. <laughs> Due to darn inflation. I tell you, like I go to the grocery store and it depresses me. Ugh. Vanessa, thanks for the two. They're um, they're all a few crayons short of a full box. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And the last one here, uh, th uh, Christina, thank you for the month here. Wait, wait, wait. Jeremy is 150K in the hole because if he is, then damn. That's like a grad school. Yeah. Tuition. Yeah. I yeah, mean, and more coming. He filed a federal yeah. lawsuit. There's going to be another 150 grand. People that, have that's... no idea how much it costs. Like, it's insane to get justice. Lawyers are $400 an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are like medium tier lawyers. If you want the good and, ones, they're like eight hundred to a thousand dollars an hour. Yeah, and if you're bringing on like, uh, you know, a lot of times they bring on more people experts. with them. Yes, what and, about well, experts? they'll bring on. They'll oh bring yeah, on but other... you're talking about co-counsels and yep. assistants and paralegals. You're paying for all of that. Yep, it's insane the amount of money we that that Justice case is for about, the wealthy. That's it. That 2019 case we were talking about, it burned two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and didn't get past the anti-slap portion. It burned that much money just getting to that point. That's insane, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are at the bottom here. Um, I'm redirecting people toward Larry. Go over to DUI guy. Tell them Tug sent you to. Make sure that he give him some love. And, yeah, anything you want to add, Megan? Uh, well, there is going to be new trial or hearing footage coming from the Eighth Circuit. I have ordered and paid for a 2021 hearing starring all our favorite players, Judge DeThomasis, Mark Feather, and uh, Silverman, Attorney Silverman. It may, from what I hear, be the origin story of the judge's deep dislike for Mark Feather. Maybe. We'll see. It also is another hearing, and I have the court documents, all the case files on it, which I'm going to start going over on my channel before I watch the hearing. I don't I don't know when they're going to be sending it to me, but I did order it today and they confirmed they got my money and everything. And the case is another protective order. So it's a similar case. And I want to see if Judge DeThomas has acts the same way in this case. I heard it might be different. Mm. So we're That'll going be to find out. Yeah, it should well, be fascinating. I think it will be. I think it'll be really good. All right. Well, I'm going in here. We're going to Larry. So everybody go over there. Give him some love. Tell him Tug Megan sent you. And uh, we took all his super chats. <laughs> 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 Later. 